Councilor Kassiri. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Good evening, everyone. On uh, Monday 18th, I'm sorry, Monday, April 18th, we finished up our last um, budget session. Also on Monday, April 18th, from the comfort of my own home, I watched the Boston Marathon, where I know we had uh, several Groton residents participate. So I just wanted to publicly congratulate all of our local Boston runners on your achievement, because it's a big one. Uh, speaking of athletes, I was sorry to miss Groton Little League's opening day, but it happened to be my first practice for 6-7 Groton Soccer Club. I know we also have youth lacrosse season going on too, so I just wanted to wish all of our young athletes a great spring season. On Saturday, I attended the Brews and Books event at Beard Brewing, where Beard created four literary-themed brews, a dollar of each of those um, benefited the Groton Public Library, and the Groton Public Library also debuted their book bike, which was great, and Groton's own Bank Square Books donated books, which were given out at the event. I also received an email from a concerned citizen who wanted to know if Public Works could post their road maintenance schedules, and various other emails regarding a retirement of the Noank Minister, the reval process, planning and development, and an invite to Poetry in the Park, where I hope to see a good turnout on Saturday. Thank you. Councilor McBride. Thank you. I don't have anything special or extraordinary to report this evening. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor Westervelt. Thank you. Um, so I attended the Earth Day with. I attended Earth Day with Senator Summers, out at Bluff Point. I um, also went to the Tree Trails ribbon cutting, which was a lot of fun. It's cold that day, colder than we expected. Um, Additionally, I went to a CGA Celebrate, which was their end of the year musical event that they have at the Coast Guard Academy, which was a lot of fun. Uh, it was really kind of cool to see all those people. Um, additionally, just uh, so everyone knows, and if anybody wants to go out and support it, the U.S. Coast Guard Academy girls sevens rugby team made uh, their way to the finals for nationals out at Stonington. They went, they won three different tournaments, and last weekend they secured themselves a spot at nationals, which is going to be at the um, Coast Guard facility out on Togwonk Road on Sunday um, for the national championship. Um, other than that, that's pretty much it. Thank you. Councilor Bordelon. Um, thank you. Um, I have nothing to report other than I did check out um, one of the new businesses in Mystic, uh, Port of Call. Um, very nice. Met the owners, and um, I guess there will be a ribbon cutting coming out soon. Um, great local business to check out. If people that are local that know it might know the old Emporium that used to be there. Um, so it was really cool to kind of see the Emporium kind of transferred into this kind of um, <coughs> nice looking, uh, they, they mimicked like a wooden ship on the inside, a lot of wood. On the downstairs, they have uh, different activities. It was definitely, um, seemed like people were enjoying it and a great asset to downtown Mystic. So I encourage people to go support them. Thank you. Thank you. I um, had the privilege of speaking at Groton Little League opening day. So I want to thank the league for uh, inviting me to do that. Um, also, um, I had the privilege of meeting Senator Blumenthal as he was here in Groton um, uh, to introduce a $725,000 grant um, that will be used to um, uh, at Escrow Point Beach and Palmer Cove in order to, you know, essentially make the, the, the that coastline, that little piece there, a little more resilient. So. That was a great privilege. Um, Council Baumgartner? Yes. Um, I, too, attended uh, Senator Blumenthal's uh, press conference um, to accept uh, $725,000 in uh, funding. Um, it's a defined as a congressionally directed spending, um, also known as an earmark. Uh, certainly a welcome addition in the last few years. Uh, we haven't seen that kind of uh, investment or uh, spending down in Congress to support local projects. And so um, this was a project that uh, back in 2019, um, uh, Mark Berry, the Public uh, Parks and Recreation Director, presented to the council. Um, and it's very nice to, to see the project get funded, and even better to see it get funded with uh, federal dollars. 
Um, so I just want to thank Senator Blumenthal for his efforts to support resilience in, in Groton, as uh, the mayor mentioned. Um, certainly, you know, anything we can do to mitigate the impacts of, of rising sea levels, certainly in that area, um, I think are incredibly important. So I um, want to thank the town and Parks and Rec uh, Department and the Nature Conservancy for their efforts on that. Um, and other than that, uh, nothing else to report. Thank you. Council Jones. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I attended the Coffee with the Cops on last, uh, during last week. Uh, thank you to Chelsea Groton Bank for hosting that. Um, it was a nice event. Chase was there. Everybody loves Chase, so it's fun to, fun to see, see that dog. Um, on Friday, did the food bank with the city of Groton in United Way. Um, I think we did over 240 families this, um, this month. So that was a great event. Uh, Saturday was Earth Day, so I worked with uh, Groton Open Space at Haley, at Haley Farm, and we did a cleanup. My arm's still recovering from uh, all the prickers and things that we did, but we did a lot of cleanup. We had a tremendous turnout, including scouts um, and just a lot of people, so it was really a, a, a fun event. And then in the afternoon, um, with uh, Councilor Cassieri, did the brews and books at uh, Beard. Um, also, a great fundraiser for Groton Public Library. Um, Beard said it was the largest group of people that has ever come to any of their events. So people like to read and and uh, have a beer. So it was a nice way to uh, uh, give a donation to the to the library and support them. So very good, Councilor Franco. Thank you. I also attended Groton Little League the opening day and. Um, after that, there were discussions with some board members that the Groton Little League is always looking for volunteers, and specifically, they're looking for somebody to run their snack shack. So if there's anybody in our community that has some free time and would like to donate their time, uh, Groton Little League is always looking for help. I had numerous correspondence with residents regarding a wide range of topics. Um, Recently in emails, uh, we received an email from the town manager regarding details on uh, the potential mediator for the council, and I was hoping that the town manager could go into some more details at some point in our meeting um, regarding that. And we also received recently a FOI request, and I have some questions on that, that um, is this a the proper time that I may address those? Um, it's, I mean, it's communication you received, so I suppose so. Thank you. So there was an FOI request um, from our TM member, Ian Thomas, and in it, it states that um, they would like, he would like um, all emails, text, and phone records involving contact between town staff, including specifically the town manager, town clerk, and the town attorney, police chief, plus the union representatives and other police personnel, town counselors, and RTM members, including and specifically the moderator, for matters pertaining to the town council's personnel and appointments and to agency boards and commission process and applicants. Their request also includes all emails, texts, and phone records involving contact between town staff, including and specifically the town manager, town clerk, and town attorney, police chief, plus union representatives, and other police personnel, town counselors, and RTM members, including and specifically the moderator for matters pertaining to the RTM civilian oversight research committee's activities and members. So my question is probably, I don't know who would be able to answer this, but um, there were two things that I was wondering is what, when it comes to phone records, I, I mean, after emails and texts, what phone records would be anybody looking for? We don't, you know, since phone records don't have the topics, there, there really wouldn't be a way to look that up. Also is, um, can you actually request those documents between any of these people and union representatives? Anybody that's uh, you know, town staff or town official are subject to FOIA. And that's union yes. representatives? Yes. All right, thank you very much. And that's all, thank you. Thank you. On to you, approval of minutes. I make a motion to approve the Committee of the Whole Special Meeting Minutes of March 29, 2022 
in April 5th, 2022, and to approve the Committee of the Whole meeting minutes of April 12th, 2022, so moved. Second. Moved by Melendez, seconded by Jones. Council Franco. Um, after looking into the minutes, it's noted in here that Mayor Melendez had called a question on two, two occasions. It state, states it on our, our page five and our page six. I'm not sure if that means you called the question for a vote or you were calling a vote. Because calling the question usually means stop discussion right. and and then if that was the case, there should be a tally of who voted that way. And otherwise, when it states called the question, I think it means it should maybe say called the vote. Um, yeah, I believe that calling the vote is the correct term there. All right. And um, I'm also... The first motion that was made on 3A on page 3 was the original motion. Was that the one that was in our packet? Where are we looking? On pa our page 3, section 3, 3A, mm -hmm. the first motion. Because that wasn't the motion that was in the packet. And that's why there were two amended motions on top of it. I don't know if that was, I believe that was different than what's listed here yeah that that I don't know I'd have to go, go look back because I think you had read it and I thought we were, we were told to read what was in the packet and then we could make amended motions on top of that we can have uh, Lisa double check that and make sure okay. it's corrected if it's correct okay thank you thank you Okay, so I'll call for a vote on approving the minutes with uh, the knowledge that a couple things might be um, amended here. Uh, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? That carries unanimously eight. In favor, zero. Opposed, zero. Abstaining. to new business. Fair housing policy can be found on page 16. I make a motion to recommend a resolution to affirm the town's policy of promoting and assuring equal housing opportunity through the approval of this fair housing policy resolution and authorizes the town manager or his designated representative to respond to and assist any person who alleges to be the victim of an illegal discriminatory housing practice in the town of Groton through the designated state, federal, or local programs providing assistance in legal services and fair housing standards. So moved. Kasiri, second. Moved by Melendez, seconded by Kasiri. We have Director Reiner here. Good evening, everyone. Uh, for many years, the town of Groton has had a fair housing policy. Uh, the policy itself really is just the, um, the body of the, um, the referral that you have in front of you. It's stating that we are committed to the principles of fair housing for everyone and that we will uphold those laws and there's a, that there's a process in place if people feel that that's been violated. We post this policy in the town and it's distributed uh, to all the employees of the town. I should also put a plug in. This is Fair Housing uh, Month and something that we uh, we do every year. And there's a lot of notices that we put out there uh, about that. Very good. Thank you. Councilor Bordelon. Um, thank you. Is this the same one from the lot? Like we just approve the same one every time? Yes. Yeah. So is this um, just basically like the state guided uh, what they recommend you put into it? Or is this something that we have drafted and added to 
make it unique in our own way? Um, I think there are some pieces that are unique in that it's specifically calling out the town of Groton and you know the town manager, but a, a lot of this is, is pretty standard language for what a fair housing policy is. Right, and there's it also states on the site that you can also add in certain things privy to your own town and what you wish to put in there, correct? Correct. Um, I, I just, this really hasn't like, I mean, it would be nice if we kind of walk, walk, walk through this every year instead of just kind of rubber stamping it. Um, since I've been up here, it's the same language. I mean, we've evolved hmm. in the last three years, and I think we should revisit the document and give it the good effort of revision, looking at the state guidelines, and also maybe adding some things that we uniquely think would be in our best interest for the town of Groton. Um, there's some things I see in here, and I look at other towns' um, pledge to do this, and I saw some um, things that I thought, you know, maybe we were missing, and uh, but there really hasn't been the platform to um, have a working um, agenda item on this. It's kind of here it is, and here's your motion. So um, in future, I think it'd be great to kind of involve the council on this. Is there a way in which we can do such? Uh, yes, if that's uh, an item the council wants to take mm -hmm. up. At any point in time, we certainly can. If you right. have suggestions of other right. community fair housing policies that you've seen that you like items from there, please forward those on to, to the town manager, and uh, we can work with that. We can also uh, run that through our community development advisory committee and see if they have any input on the matter also. Right. I just think it next maybe next year make it an agenda item. I just don't think corresponding an email. Um, is fair to the community to see like what things might want to be on there and allow community input on it as well. There might be some things. So again, I think that should be brought before the council for full discussion, but I do appreciate, I think this is an important issue, but I think it could be um, more encumbersome of, of the, the beliefs of the community, which the councilors represent. Thank you. Councilor Kassiri. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Hi, Mr. Rainer. Uh, have you had any complaints about this particular policy? Uh, not in the recent past, not that I'm aware of. Okay, thank you. Councilor Baumgartner. Yes, um, uh, currently does the town manager serve as the designee uh, for someone, say somebody alleges illegal housing discrimination, uh, then you would point them to either a HUD or CHRO um, at that point. Oh, I guess, has the town ever received any such complaint from an individual? Not, not my time here. Not no. my time here either. So um, I can't go back past, say, eight years, but as, as far as my knowledge, no. And has the manager and his um, and or his designee um, been the person to respond should any person come up, or will that be established with this policy? Uh, that's always been the policy. Okay. Yes. So this just reaffirms it in a written policy? Correct. All right. Thank you. Yeah, the written policy it just mirrors the referral in front of you. Thank you. You're Council Bordelon? Yeah, so the paragraph where it says Connecticut Fair Housing Laws require that all individuals, regardless of race, creed, color, national origin, uh, ancestry, sex, marital status, age, um, disability, um, did, did we check to make sure like that is we're hitting because things have changed and I saw in other towns that paragraph was a little bit updated. Uh, I know that came from the state website and it may have been modified since then. Uh, so ours does reference um, mental disability, sexual orientation or gender identity or expression be given equal access to all housing. Uh, I, I, I think this is pretty updated. Yeah, it just there looks a little. Um, also, the his, her, it should be general neutral terms. Maybe if you're going to say sexual orientation, it also should have general neutral terms in the document as well. Because not everybody identifies as his or her. So, as well, that should also reflect in here. Thank you. So, can we amend that to make it, you know, make sure it does reflect that? I'm not seeing a so his or manager, her. Um, oh, his or her, or any other general neutral um, <coughs> terms that are in here. Um, I think I flagged it. Yeah, okay. Let's see. It might have been just that one that went out and it says manager is her, but again, we should use a, a more terms. Discussion. I'll call for a vote. All in favor say aye. 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 
opposed? Abstentions? That carries unanimously. Eight in favor, zero opposed, zero abstaining. Thank you. Thank you. On to Economic Development Commission 2021 annual report. can be found on page 18. Um, we're going to have to delay that one. There was a medical emergency that came up in the last hour. Okay. Just point, point of clarification, are we delaying it to another agenda yes, date? Yes, yes. Yeah, I'll get with, uh, with the uh, chairman of the EDC to schedule a new time. On to approving FYE 2023 budget. Can be found on page 21. Make a motion to recommend a resolution approving the FYE 2023 budget. Second, Jones. Moved by Melendez, seconded by Jones. <coughs> Director Landry. Good evening, everyone. In your packet, you'll see that the, I have provided you the town council has reviewed the town manager's budget and made adjustments to various functions. And also included is a reconciliation of the manager's proposed to council's general fund budget, any reconciliation of the manager's proposed um, capital projects budget, as well as a few additional reports. Um, the town manager's budget was 148 million that required a 7.8% increase. After the council has made their adjustments, it is now uh, was reduced by 5.6 million and it's now 142 million and is a 3.7% increase over the fiscal 22 budget. Um, it, we are planning to use four, excuse me, four million dollars of unassigned fund balance, and this would result in a mill rate of 21.16, which is a reduction of the current mill rate from 25.98 by 18 and a half percent, um, and that is for the general fund. For the Mumford Cove, it would be a decrease of 0 0.05 mills from 0.33 to 0.28, and the sewer district will maintain uh, their current mill rate of 0 0.37. So if you have any questions, I'll try to answer them for you. Thank you. Councilman McBride? I don't have a question, but I just think it would be important if we could, and I, and I apologize, I don't have a copy of it, but there was an email that went out that indicated what the property taxes would be on certain uh, certain residential properties and estimate is there any way we could just um, provide that so the read the, the listeners could see because from what i recall um the taxes there were there were some decreases and i think it was a two hundred thousand dollar or three hundred thousand that one yeah if we could maybe just put that on the record so residents know the actual impact Yeah, we okay. can add that to, I think Lisa was going to add it to there anyhow, but I will make a note of that. Councilor Baumgartner? Yes, um, just a process related question. Um, at this point now, uh, we uh, approve this budget. Uh, obviously, it's going through the RTM process now. Um, if you could give a quick rundown of what that will look like, the um, and then kind of what the process will be for um, its return back to us. Sure. Um, the RTM will begin their budget on Monday, um, May second, and they have until the end of May to complete their budget. And once that is finalized, it will um, return to the council to set the final mill rate, which must be set by June 9th. And just to mention, it is currently in the committees of the RTM, though, so we've been having ongoing budget meetings. Thank you. Council Borlaug? Um, thank you. Uh, looking at this, I mean, uh, is there any areas that the town manager would recommend? I know when he makes his initial budget, it's much earlier on in the year, and I think it's good to forecast moving it as it now moves from our hands to the RTM. Are there any other frivolous items in here that you could see as low-hanging fruit that you would, as the town manager, think that could be still cut at this time? Uh, you know, not really. I mean, there's been some changes made in committees of RTM uh, with CIPs, because you know, our department budgets are pretty bare bones. Um, so we'll see what the full RTM does, but it, you know, it's not substantial. Other than uh, there was a uh, out of committee, there's a hold on our biggest, one of our bigger items, the boilers for the 
uh, annex uh, with some thought of give, looking at alternative uh, energy types. So we'll see where that goes. Okay. So if I'm hearing you correct, you're not seeing anything else at this time that could be cut that you'd recommend based on the ARPA dollars that have come in, where you see these numbers as they lay before us, and then moving to the council, um, any items that maybe that you reviewed after your recommendations that you, you're not at this time recommending being cut? No, I don't at this time. And just a notice, note to the public, we have many uh, meetings before we put this together, so we've already weeded out a whole lot of things before we actually put anything in here. Right. Um, and what what is our numbers going to be, um, our fund balance, uh, if we go with this number, what will our final fund balance? Uh, About 19%. At the end of uh, I'm sorry? about 19 percent, and what would that number be? 28 million. 28 million. And then my last question is: I know at one of the meetings um, last minute we started allocating ARPA funds before having a full ARPA review of the funds. It was just kind of sporadically added in, you know, diced in, seasoned into the budget. Like, well, let's let's put this up for ARPA funds, let's put that up for ARPA funds. But there was really no master plan or discussion. It just kind of was presented on the night of the budget. Um, are there? Are we sure at this point moving forward to the RTM that all the items that were designated that were going to be used for ARPA funds are in its proper preview to be used in that way? Yes. Um, per, because I know there was like, oh, I'm not sure if that one can. I know the bridge came up in Stonington. Um, has, is there any more talk about that? Yes, it's been looked at. And just as a note, the, uh, it cannot be used for a match for federal funds for a bridge. Right. Okay. I just, just want to make sure as we move forward that yeah, those, those kinks have been laid and it's on the record. Thank you. All right. Seeing no further discussion, <coughs> I'll call for a vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Carries unanimously. Eight in favor, zero. Opposed, zero. Abstaining. <laughs> On to computation of tax rate for general fund. We found on page 22. I make a motion to recommend a resolution computing a tentative tax rate for general fund FYE 2023. So moved. Casiri, second. Moved by Melinda, seconded by Casiri. Can I just mention one thing overall on this process? If the council, one option the council has is if they, by the time they receive the budget back from our team, if you enacted the um, conveyance tax fee, let's say about, we'll say half a million, or ballpark, uh, you could then set your fund balance for an, an extra, let's say 500,000, knowing you're not gonna collect it and that you would use those, you'd have those conveyance taxes. So that's something that, that could help if you end up do, deciding to do that. Thank you. Councilor Franco? So we're reading from the um, handout that we received, right, on page two. Is that what you're reading from? Mayor Melendez, are oh. you reading from page two of the handout? Page two. Well, I don't know what you mean. What? So, I think that's right there. Yeah. the bottom of page two, I guess. That's yeah. yeah. That's the resolution. So he's reading actually from page 22 out of our packets, and are we not supposed to be reading the full resolution that's in page two? The actual, the resolutions will be when we uh, um, recess to the council meeting. That's when we'll read that resolution. Right, this is just the motion. Right, this is it. the motion, right. But the motion doesn't have any kind of numbers at all in it. No. It's when we read the resolution that we put the numbers in it. Which is in just a few minutes. Mm -hmm. That's our typical process every year, right? Yeah, that's what we do every year. All right, thank you. I will just say for the general fund, just to reiterate that we, um, with the town council budget using four million dollars of fund balance, it is a reduction of 4.82 mills from 25, the current mill rate of 25.998, excuse me, to 21.16 for the general fund. Okay. 
Seeing no further discussion, I'll call for a vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? That carries unanimously. Eight in favor, zero opposed, zero abstained. On to computation of tax rate for Mumford Cove, page 23. I make a motion to recommend a resolution computing the tentative tax rate for Mumford Cove, FYE 2023. So moved. Second, Jones. Moved by Melendez, seconded by Jones. So the mill rate for Mumford Cove will be reduced by zero. But point zero 0.05, excuse me, from 0 0.33 to 0 0.28. And if you recall, Mumford Cove um, is taxed to pay the fire protection to Noink Fire District. Thank you. Seeing no discussion, I'll call for a vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? The carries unanimously eight in favor, zero opposed, zero abstaining. On to computation of tax rate for Groton Sewer District, page 24. I make a motion to recommend a resolution computing the tentative tax rate for the Groton Sewer District, FYE 2023. So moved. Second. Moved by Melendez, seconded by Baumgartner. And the sewer district main is maintaining the current mill rate of 0 0.37. And if you recall, we issued the bonds for the sewer for the sewer treatment plant last year, and that is that debt payment will be due in the fiscal 23, and that maintains. That's why the mill rate is being maintained to pay for that debt service. Seeing no discussion, I'll call for a vote. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. Abstentions. The carries unanimously. Eight in favor. Zero opposed. Zero abstaining. On to, on to introduction of an ordinance changing and redefining the voting districts. Page 25. I make a motion to recommend a resolution to hold a public hearing on May 3rd, 2022, to introduce the ordinance changing and redefining the voting districts. So moved. Second, Bordelon. Moved by Melendez. Seconded by Bordelon. I do have, uh, I can project a map onto the screen if you're interested. Thank you. So. We have our registrar voters, Kristen Venditti and town clerk, Betsy McCausher. Welcome. <clears throat> so every 10 years they redistrict as you all are aware. Um, so this year we got the map in and it changed just a little bit out of a couple districts which have ended up affecting four of our districts, one, two, three, and four. Um, so some of the people from one ended up moving into four, some of the people from three ended up moving into two, we placed them in two. Um, there was a question on district two because of where it was located, whether it should go into district one, um, and after reviewing the requests of the counselors and the representative um, from the state, we did decide to do a peninsula type of a look, and I, we have that on the, the map um, if you want to see it, that um, puts them into District 2. So, you know, 3 comes down, 2 kind of borders it, and then goes down into its normal district. Um, that leaves the city intact in two districts as it was before and the difference is that they moved from the 40 41st district into the 40th district or i might have that backwards no i had it right okay i always get that backwards for some reason um so you know we made up some maps um noah helped us in uh, making up these maps and printing them out very large um and so i went through the previous ordinance and I updated it and you know went through and checked Betsy checked my work I know Andre checked my work um, so hopefully we have everything the way it's supposed to be um, but as you can see on that map the the grayish areas are the ones that have changed so originally the one to the left used to be essentially blue 
and now it's going to become pink. Um, so you see where I was talking about the little peninsula there. And then the one coming across the other way, um, the only people that moved in that one are the one in the, the fatter area of that upper gray. The one along Route 95 is just the way that the state did it. They moved it from one side of the highway to the other. So that doesn't affect people. Um, but the one in the wide, those are the people that move from District 1 up to District 4. Um, so those are the changes. I don't know if you have any other questions or you want any more information from me. Council Borlaug. Oh, thanks. So, yeah, this is something I was following very closely because it was affecting my neighborhood. Um, I'm in District 3 moving into District 2. Well, that's what I was told by the state. And then I received a change of my voting status um, a couple weeks ago stating that I was moved into District 1 and that my voting registration had been changed. And that was alarming to me because, in fact, I was concerned that who else may become confused by this because I knew that I, there's no way I could be part of District 1 and be paying city taxes to the city when only two and three make up city taxes. So I knew that there had to be an error of some sort. How do I move to District 1, which is not a city district? So I, just, I guess I'm concerned how many of those uh, notices went out. Well, that depends. Um, we did not send out notices to everyone yet because we're waiting for approval on the districts and the buildings before we can send those out. In order for you to have received that, you would have had to go online and re-register or go to the DMV and change something in your driver's license or somehow we received notification that something changed for you and that's why you got that letter. Yeah. Um, that was just a, a temporary letter um i mean it's a letter that we are required to send out the placing of you in district one was what that i thought originally i had to do because lytton avenue is in the middle like in between the new peninsula district two and the lower district two and i thought that they were district one i was told that they were supposed to be in District 1. Mm. So in order to do that, we didn't want to have to jump from the top of the peninsula and put you guys in District 2. Mm -hmm. So what we were going to do, we were working with the state to figure out what we had to do um, or how we could handle that. What we were actually going to do is leave you in District 3 voting location, but we were going to separate you out so that you got your separate ballots. Um, I, we figured that at that point, the way that was set up would have been the easiest way for the voters not to get completely confused. Um, as they walked in, there's like six or eight streets, I don't remember the exact number right now, um, that were affected by this. So we were going to put up signs as you walk into your polling location saying, you know, if you live on these streets, please go to this door. If you live on the rest, go to this store or whatever to try to help that. But that was going to be a very tricky situation. So after um, looking things over and realizing that the information that I had that District 1 um, was Lytton Avenue and that it wasn't actually Lytton Avenue, it was actually District 2, it became very clear, very simple to just put everybody in District 2 and make it a peninsula. Then we don't have to separate out anybody and give them separate ballots. Mm -hmm. um, and so what type of... Um outreach is going to happen as a result of all these changes. I think it's important that we embrace the change, but I think education has to be um, of the, four, you know, up in, like, definitely for my neighborhood, for example, that now, you know, used to vote at the, um, at the municipal, this, building. municipal building in the city. Now they're going to the former West Side building, if in fact that's where we're going back to, or are we going to be at Catherine Kolnaski? So I just worry about voter access and with a lot of change happening in that area from the from you know voting at the beach to west side closing to the new building and now that change we really have to start today making sure that all the roads that were affected are posted and we're, we're, we're constantly rolling them on social media websites facebook wherever we can get this out and more detailed so like even this like doesn't tease out the roads so the people watching at home you know it'd be great to have a list of all the roads that were affected and where their new locations are going to be um, so I'm just curious as to what the plan is for education moving forward 
Okay, so we already have a plan in, in effect of what we're going to do. We budgeted for it. Um, you guys approved that budget. So um, anyway, specifically, we are going to be sending a card to every voter in the town because a lot of people, first of all, have heard about the redistricting. Um, there's schools that are closing, people constantly calling us to see, you know, do, did my polling place move? So we just figured the best thing to do, and the state requires us to um, notify people definitely that we're changed, um, where it affects four of the districts, um, and we wanted to make sure that everybody was fully aware, so they will get a card in the mail. Um, we're not going to do that until it gets closer to the primary because um, they will lose it and then they won't know where they're supposed to go, so we've, we've had that in the past. So in addition to that, um, I have been working with Kim Dralick from the day, and we are going to um, get some schmear whatever campaigns out there that, that put all that information out there. Um, it will end up being put on the Groton Municipal TV like we've done in the past. Um, we've also contacted in the past, haven't yet, we're going to, um, contact radio, t radio stations so that um, they can tell them where they can go look for the information. Also, um, NOAA is working with the online system um, where we already have something on our, our web under the GIS viewer area that if you put in your street, it tells you where you vote. So that will be updated as well. Um, we cannot start this campaign until the streets and the locations for the polling places have been approved by the council. So I was actually going to talk about that tonight, and you know we talked about it via email with the um, town manager and the mayor. Okay. Huh? Yeah. Huh? Can talk about the locations? No, no, no. Oh. Okay. Um, so we were going to, I was going to bring it up just to, to let you know what was going on and then we have to get it on a council agenda in the near future. Once it's approved for the new locations, um, we've already been in, in contact, I've already had a meeting with the um, Board of Ed and we've decided where the locations are going to be. Um, that was just last week. So um, we're putting in the works to get that out there. Once everything is approved, then we can start the campaign to let people know. So my last question is for the town manager. So we need to put this on an agenda item after right. this presentation. Yes, and uh, uh, the sense? town clerk had mentioned maybe next Tuesday. Mm -hmm. If you wanted to do a town, a special cow, we could get it all. Is there, is no, is there no public, public hearing required for that, right? So you could get it done next Tuesday if you wanted. Because, yeah, I would think that we want to move on this. Couldn't yeah. we do it tonight? No, because it's... We, you know, it, it goes along with what the presentation is tonight. Mm -hmm. The presentation needs to go out for a public hearing before it can be it will approved. Have a public hearing. So we will have to have a public hearing before we can do the, oh. the districts. Okay. However, the locations, sure. the buildings that were going to be used is just to council and register our voters matter. So once you guys approve where we've uh, proposed to have the locations, that part is done. This part with the changing of the redistricting and moving Moving people to different districts that is something that has to go out to a public hearing so that's going to take a little bit of time okay but thanks I think for clarifying that's, that. that's that's been some may, may 3rd may 3rd's the final is it may 3rd's public hearing and then we'll have the final council thing after that correct approval or right. denial or whatever thank, thank you for clarifying and i hope i got moved back into the right district um, yes there was no address change so thank you yeah no we we didn't send that letter letting you know that things had moved you it was it was brought on by we got it from like a state uh, notification yeah, that something had changed yeah nothing changed uh, i would have to change my address to be in a district one location so. you changed your address for jefferson drive and it said move to district one i sent you the copy well d yes yeah yeah so. well the, i saw the letter yeah and the letter says that it came in through the dmv Interesting. and that you know there was a change reported to the dmv um, we get some of those sometimes when like the DMV gets a notification that you've moved um, They send us something we send out a letter. It's kind of a It's it's a verification of your new address or whatever But it really is kind of a backup that letter is to let us know if the DMV informed us and you didn't really move um, Because sometimes you know, we'll get that somebody moved out of town because they registered a car at their mother's house in Waterford 
So when we send out that letter to them saying, hey, did you move? They say, no, I didn't. I registered a car. So then we, we, re we correct that as registrars saying this was a mistake on the DMV's part of not understanding fully what they were doing. Yeah. Uh, thank you for clarifying it because it was so confusing. So thank you. Yes, I apologize yeah. for that. Yeah. But that was one of our one-offs. <laughs> just happened to go right to you. Yeah, yeah. I was like, wait, 24 Jefferson Drive is moving to District 1? Wow. Yeah. But that was at the time. That's where I thought it yeah. was going. So Thank I you. had to get the redistricting done for the state by a certain time. Yeah. So then when it was brought up and acknowledged, we would have had to do that tonight, and I would have had to go back and change everything. So I'm really glad that you got that letter so we could fix it ahead of time and know Thank that you. it was okay for you to be in District 2. Yeah. Thank you. I was going to ask for all my taxes back from the city. <laughs> <laughs> no, you still would have been city, no matter where you voted. <laughs> right Thank you. Hey, Mayor, I just wanted to note that Councilor Parker arrived at 711. Okay. Thank you. Any further questions? Councilor Baumgartner? Yes, I just want to thank um, both uh, the town clerk and our registrar um, for your work on uh, drafting this map. I've um, been following from afar for, for some time now. Um, and want to thank you for making that adjustment, especially, um, you know, that uh, neighborhood in District 3 net that is now in District 2. Um, I would note just on the last page um, uh, of the ordinate, draft ordinance, it states uh, changes to District 1, 3, and 4 have been made as required by the 2021 redistrict plan enacted by the state of Connecticut. And that, that it should be changed to, um, by vote of the Grand Town Council, portions of District 3 have moved to District 2. Um, and then j the sentence above changes to District uh, 1, 3, uh, one, two, three, and four have been made as required by the 2021 redistricting plan uh, enacted by the state of Connecticut. And then the last one, uh, District 5, instead of Districts 2, it would just be Districts 5, 6, and 7 have not had any changes to their boundaries. We will do that, yes. Thank and then um, lastly, thank you also. Uh, I know it's not on the agenda this evening. Um, but just regarding uh, the polling locations, um, just having it be more centrally located, restoring it to it, their, their former location. Um, and my last inquiry, I just I ran some numbers on the actual voting districts. In District 1, it's population of about 5,117. District 2 would have a population of 4,731. District 3 would have a population of 4,670. District 4 and it would now have a population of 12,440. District 5 would have a population of 4,002. District 6 would have a population of 4,146. And then District 7 would have a population of 305. Obviously, uh, in terms of RTM districts, uh, that would be, um, and be, be done based on, um, well, I see, bef before I keep running out of my time, I see a nod, so I want to let the <laughs> clerk answer or so get to that um, before I continue. We don't do this based on population. Uh, registered right. voters. Based on registered voters. Right. Um, this is based on registered voters, but you are correct in the fact that District 4 has, like, and two thirds more than it had before, or at least half. Um, and that was one of our largest districts to begin with. Yeah. So I ran the report on registered voters and it is quite a bit more. Mm -hmm. um, so we are gonna have to probably look into moving some of those district four voters to district five, but then will that make district five disproportionate? Um, and then will some of the fives go to six or seven? I, I don't remember exactly the map right now, but um, we're going to have to to discuss that. Um, but I don't think that it's absolutely necessary right now. I mean, yes, we are going to have a busy election, um, but we could try to do this. But I would prefer, um, I guess, depending on time, if we were to move them, I just wouldn't want to confuse things with moving people right now. Absolutely. Um, but we definitely need to look at it, um, but it may be a major reconstruction of, of the 40th district um, with how many people are in every place. Go back 
eight instead of seven. And I, I was going to say, as you know, because RTM districts are created based off of the, the total voter population, registered voter population, not the total um, population. Um, obviously, there's a lot more, uh, you know, the 12,000, it's a little misleading because uh, many folks who live in District 4 are military and may be registered in, in other communities, you know, their home communities. Um, but, you know, will we get to the point where potentially the, the, the District 4 is a little larger in terms of registered voters where they're going to have more seats? And I know sometimes it's in District 4, it's like pulling teeth to, to get people to step up. So. Um, Will we potentially need to look at maybe even dividing it and maybe having a, an additional voting precinct and dividing it into two? Right. Yes, that's, that's a possibility. We will need to discuss all of that to determine how we want to handle it. And I know Stonington did that with Pawkatuck because it was just so dis disproportionately, I think it was District 2, uh, which is Pawkatuck, was disproportionately larger than some of the other voting districts, and so they, they broke it up into two. Um, but that's a fight for another day. I uh, just thought I'd bring yeah, it the up. The RTM can never have more than 45 members. Mm -hmm. That's it's a computation based on the town charter, and it's based on registered voters within each district. Thank so you. District 4 right now, I ran the report mm -hmm. of registered voters. Mm -hmm. We were all around 3,000, um, some were under 3,000, some were a little bit over, but we were all pretty even until this okay. happened. Awesome. But now District 4, um, we you know figure on the, they were like 3,400, they're now up to like 5,500. Okay. So that's why I say it is still disproportionate from the others. The others are still within reason, I think, um, with these voters from three going into two, two's been brought up a little bit. They were one of our lower ones, so that's actually good um, to bring them more into check with the other ones. But we can definitely go over that. I can pull reports right before we do it to show you what we have. Um, maybe we need to do this in a you know discussion atmosphere, you know, kind of like this versus a council meeting or something. As I, I've said to you both before, uh, teamwork makes the dream work. So appreciate the. Uh the communication and um, look forward to uh, approving the public hearing this evening. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor Franco. I just have um, possibly a point of information. Should Councilor Bumgardner actually make an amended motion to change the numbers um, regarding the districts that you had mentioned? And because it's because um, the motion on the floor is to introduce the ordinance changing and redefining the voting districts for the public hearing, and if this document is as we pass, I think the amended motion would change those numbers. So I think that would be prudent to do. What would the amendment be, though? Well, it was Councilor Baumgartner's notations of what he found. With I can numbers. probably tell you because I wrote it. <laughs> so um, on the third page of the ordinance, um, number two is fine. Um, it's no changes to districts one, three, and four have been made. That shouldn't be changed to changes to districts one, two, three, and four um, have been made as required by the 2021 redistricting plan enacted by the state of Connecticut. Then number three, by vote of the town council, portions of district three have moved to, and it should be district two. And then I think. That's fine. And then no, number four is fine. And number five, um, districts should say just five, six, and seven have not had any changes to their boundaries. Five, six. Um, so we should take two out of that. Right. And that's when I had originally done this so that you guys were in district one with the, the city little parcel there. They seem to move you guys around a lot. <laughs> Ten years ago, you were um, in district one. Which doesn't make any sense. I'll, I'll amend the motion. Um, so I'll, I'll, uh, do I need to restate that? Uh, no. So I'll, so moved. <laughs> Second, Franco. <laughs> okay. So we have a um, first amendment motion um, moved by Bumgardner, second by uh, Franco. Councilor Franco. So let me just question on the on the section five that you just mentioned, and it says you said uh, districts five, six, and seven have not had any changes to their, to their boundaries. 
so the part that you're highlighting in those areas have no homes is that what you're saying it's just the highway change because it's it's right. there is some grayed right. out area changes yes. it's going from what was on the southerly side of 95 now so the northerly side so but it's that, not changing anything no, there's no people there's no nobody living in that area so it does not affect us so that's why i was just voting just so their boundaries have changed it's just that there's nobody that lives in those in that area is what you're saying right according to the state map it doesn't show that there was a change it was when noah like made everything big to make sure it looked okay when he realized that they had just swapped it from one side of the highway to the other but okay. it's still a boundary on the highway because so i'm looking at the map change that and, and it, there is great area in there that's why I point of yeah. information they're highway median it's right. highway median yeah and that's what i but it, there's the gray area that she was saying mm -hmm. shows change so that's why i'm just asking so like when you're saying the boundary didn't move but it did move that's why I'm, I'm questioning that's all and if there were houses in that area so um yeah there's no no voters in that area but we can make it so that you know we can We can make another number that says that in in those districts that are affected on the open. I don't think you want to do that because your the whole intent is to say the voting district has changed and the voting gives no one was moved, you know? No one was moved. Sorry. <laughs> So the, the red line shows that it's more in the yellow on this. So the red line is where it used to be, and the colors are where they are now. So this is the map that came directly from the state. Um, so it does show a little difference, I guess, because there is some yellow on that side, but it did not affect any voters. So I don't know if we need to put that in there we can put that in there and just say that it moved from one side of the highway to the other but did not affect any voters if you would okay. like no I just wanted to make sure that nobody would be affected by it yeah nobody's okay. affected by that although okay and I, ap I appreciate all the work that you put into this and it doesn't seem like it was very easy work and um, I put that in I look forward to you coming back with um, the more information that you were discussing earlier and the potential talk of uh, maybe even having to put in another district because of population. So I appreciate everything you've done and all the hard work you, you put you. into this. Thank you very much. Thank you. Councilor Bordelon. Uh, thank you. Uh, one follow-up question. Uh, uh, Councilor Bumgarner was speaking to like the numbers and the town clerk stated um, for RTM there'll be no more than 45 no matter if we add an eighth district or not it still stays that number. Um, moving it down to party level and looking at delegates would that number change if um, different districts have more representation than they had before? I know each district um, has a certain... Are you certain talking about town committee, the Democratic town... I don't, I don't right think we should answer that question. No, RTM. <laughs> what? Do I understand that you're asking about she whether said the delegates. RTM... So I'm looking at it from the, the RTM, RTM members. There's 44, or at least there was. Well, we have 41 members have, right you're, now. Okay, but you're allowed up to 45. Five, right. So if you were to move people out right, of, should. say, District 4 and put them in 5 or put them in their own, call it 4A for now, yeah. um, some of those RTM members may the, the move district to would, District 4A. Well, the, it would just or you could shrink, you know, so District 4 would have less represent, re representatives, and 4A would have, right. you know, so say it has to take seven, you have to put four here and three here. Mm -hmm. I'm just uh, yeah. curious. But just I, to I see. thought you were talking about. So right now for the, for, the, for the last election, we only had, we had 45 seats available. No. No. We had 41. Right, so how do we get that number to 45 if it's if based on a calculation of registered voters per district? And if you, I mean, I can get the calculation if you're interested. I'm just I, wondering if we're going to move up to the 45 now with this new um, I, technically. I, I, I can't recall ever being at 45. I've been, we've been to 43, we've been to 42. I don't remember even being to 44. We were at, we were at 44 when I was on the RTM. Yeah. Oh, okay. That was back in the early 90s. When yeah, I was too. Yeah, because I did some, re I was going to bring it up, I did some research and it was, I saw the 44, mm -hmm. and so I was wondering maybe we're out of line uh, no. in the sense with the new movement. So is that, who this, do we, we, don't, we wouldn't touch the RTM, the current RTM stays just the way it is, we don't touch that until the next. 
free, right. and, I, and that's what we're talking about. All of this is thinking of a big picture, but I just want to make sure we don't miss out if we need to increase that number from 41 up to 44 again or 45. That's based so. on the number of registered voters. So this whole change didn't change the number of voters. It just moved voters from one district to another. So you would move your RTM member representative from one district to the other if needed based on the um, the population that is and registered to vote in those districts right, after I, we move them. That's what I'm asking. So will there be an realignment currently because the numbers are moving? No, we don't um, change any. You, those that were elected this last this last municipal election in 2021, they remain in that those seats for the two years. You, if you moved to Mystic, you would still, well, you don't count. But if an RTM member uh, from District One moved to District Six, they'd still be representing District One, even though they were living in District Six. You don't change from what you were elected. And that's the same for party. If you change your party while you're elected, you are still elected to the party that you represent, no matter what you're registered as, Okay. until so, your term is up. So maybe the next election, some seats may move, though. It okay. possibly could. Is that what you guys want to do? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's a possibility. Okay. And it also depends on how many people have registered to vote and not left. Gotcha. So Thanks we for tend to stay close to the same number. Thanks for clarifying. Council Jones. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. So just a, a kind of informational question on the future realigning of some of these. Is that something that happens in two years or three years? Is it? We can do it any time we want. Okay. So, so if we find that we have a major problem with District 4, per se, this year, we could change it right after that so that it's all set for next year. Okay. So whatever happens for this year would stay. It just, it's within a year or two is where you're thinking of doing that. Yeah, I'm thinking that we're probably going to need to because District 4 was already one of our busiest districts, so more people actually come out to vote in District 4, um, and there is a little bit more of registered voters in District 4 than the other ones, um, but the percentage is higher of who actually votes, so we have had a very busy um, room location there, so we may need to move some people just to make them not have to wait in line for a long time. Got it. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right, seeing no further discussion, I'll call for a vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? It carries unanimously eight in favor, zero opposed, zero abstaining. Now, I think we have to vote again because I think we just voted on the amendment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that we Mr. voted. Mayor, you, you actually Councilor Parker? No, because Did you say eight? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That was nine in favor, zero opposed, zero abstaining. <laughs> My apologies. So, what was that on the amendment? I don't believe you have to vote on the original amendment because okay. it's been nollied because you voted on the other one. So the information in the first amendment doesn't make any sense anymore. Right. No, yeah. So we, um, I believe we first voted to amend it. And oh, and now we're voting to pass it. Then yes. Okay. Okay. So how do you vote on the passing? Point of, point of clarification in, or information inquiry. Are we also going to have to set the public hearing to? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. We will. Okay. Okay. Yeah. The date of it. The introduction. Okay. Yeah. Any um, uh, the town clerk pointed out that the motion does not reference the uh, public uh, allowing the public hearing, even though it's in the resolution. So I don't know if you want to add that in. Um, I'd like to make a motion to add it in, making sure that we are setting the public hearing and adding that into the. It needs to be amended to reflect that. We, we read the motion as is, and then we amended some changes. Mm -hmm. And so the amendments are part of the original motion now. Right. Right. Now right. we're passing it all with the public hearing set for May 3rd. Right. Right. Oh, yeah. The public hearing is, is in the motion. It is in the motion. Right. right. Oh. Okay. It's not in this document, but it's, it's in, not on the, yeah, it's it's not in the motion. It's not on the introduction of the ordinance. No. It's in your right. So that's sufficient. I think sufficient. Okay. All right. Perfect. Very good. Okay, so now we're well, you have to vote on it. voting on the main motion. All in favor say aye. 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 
Opposed? Abstentions? That carries unanimously nine in favor, zero opposed, zero abstaining. Okay, so we are recessed at 7.35. And I will call to order the Town Council special meeting of Tuesday, April 26, 2022, to order at 736. All counselors are present. On to new business, fair housing policy can be found on page two. Manager Burr, just have to read the result here. Yes, that's fine. The two results. The two results. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the town of Groton hereby endorses a fair housing policy to ensure equal opportunity for all persons to rent, purchase, obtain financing, and enjoy all other housing-related services of their choice on a non-discriminatory basis as provided by state and federal law, and be it further resolved that the chief executive officer of the town of Groton or his or her designated representative is responsible for responding to and assisting any person who alleges to be the victim of an illegal discriminatory housing practice in the town of Groton and for advising such person of the right to file a complaint with the State of Connecticut Commission on Human Rights and Opportunities, CHRO, or the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development, HUD, or to seek assistance from the Connecticut Fair Housing Center, Legal Services, or other fair housing organizations to protect his or her right to equal housing opportunities so moved. Second. Move by Melendez, seconded by Franco. Okay, Manager Burt, do you have anything? No? no? Okay. Council Bordelon? Um, if we could just take out the his or her, and his or her right, like, and put just something that's a neutral, like there, or whatever, to not identify just as his or her. Is that a motion? Yeah, I'd like to make that motion. And, and it, what are you changing it to? Just anywhere that it says his or her, just make it a neutral. Is there a second? There's no We're second. Still discussing. Okay, so so which which gen, which neutral term would you want? Um, whatever sounds the best. That's not gonna be for the result of the chief officer. Where is it located? It's at the last paragraph, first line. Is her. Point of information. What's your point of information? Did we read this in the first under the cow as is, or we're we just doing it now? Did we discuss this under committee of the whole? We did. Yes, reviewed it, or was it something else? Did I miss something? One second. One second. Um, or are we just now doing the resolution of approving it? You, you, it was, you discussed it. Yeah, discussed we, it. Just did, we just discussed it. We discussed it, but there was no amended motion. There was no amended motion, though. We voted right. on the his or her. Right. Right. And that's, I would consider that one, you know, basically a correction to the right form, so I would, or, we'll make that. Thank you. Okay, so no Good. amendment. No amendment necessary? Thanks, John. Okay, thank you. Okay. Seeing no discussion, I'll call for a vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Opposed? Zero abstain. On to approving FYE 2023 budget. Uh, page three. Are we now in the handout? Yeah. Yes. Page two. Mm. Top of page two. Would you like me to read? 
Resolution approving budgets from the fiscal year commencing July 1st, 2022 and ending in June 30th, 2023. Resolved that the budgets for the various funds herein after set forth are hereby approved and adopted and the amounts of the total appropriation line are hereby approved for the function specified and the amounts listed under the heading of financing plan are hereby established as approved budget estimates for the type of revenues specified and include all estimated FYE 2023 cash revenues except FYE 2023 current property taxes, which will be estimated for budget purposes by separate resolution when the FYE 2023 tax rate is set and further that the complete detailed document, document indicating all function appropriations is hereby made a part of this record and shall be submitted to the town clerk for public record for budgets as following. General Fund, Golf Course Fund, Sewer Operating Fund, Solid Waste Fund, Munford's Cove Spe Special Taxing District, Re Revaluation Fund, Recreation and Senior Activities Fund, Borrow It, Kinetic Borrow it CT, Sewer District Fund, Capital Reserve Fund, Fleet Fund, Technology Replacement Fund, Human Services Assistance Fund. I so move. Second, Kasiri. Second, Parker. <laughs> moved by Franco, seconded by Kasiri. No discussion. I'll call for a vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? No. Abstentions? That carries eight in favor, one opposed. Westervelt, uh, zero abstaining. Okay. <clears throat> On to computing of tax, uh, com computation of tax rate. For general fund, FYE 2023, uh, that's on page four. On page four? Of, of, oh, the main of packet. Our okay. Yeah. Bottom of page two of the handout. Bottom of page two of the handout. So I'll read resolution. Uh, oh, you want to? Yeah, there I'll you do go. It. Uh, resolution computing a tentative tax rate for FYE 2023 to pay expenses appropriations approved in the general fund budget as adopted by the town council. Whereas the town council adopted on April 26, that's for you, Councilor Parker. Uh, whereas the town council adopted on April 26, 2022, a general fund budget providing for expenditures, appropriations, or expenses totaling $142,668,947 and estimated cash revenues exclusive of FYE 2023 current property taxes totaling $41,539,762 be it resolved that a tax rate of 21.16 mills is hereby determined as required by Chapter 9 of the Groton Town Charter and based on the following computations. Total general fund appropriations per budget approved by council, $142,668,947. Last general fund cash receipts exclusive of FYE 2023 current property taxes, $41,539,762. Less the amount to be appropriated from the unassigned fund balance of $4 million. Amount to be raised from property taxes, $97,129,185. Amount computed as follows, $97,129,185. Dollars divided by the net assessed valuation before Board of Assessment adjustments of four billion six hundred six hundred forty million six hundred ninety four thousand four hundred forty five dollars divided by ninety eight point nine percent collection rate multiplied by one thousand equals twenty one point one six mill rate so moved second moved by Bumgardner seconded by Franco. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just had one question. Um, I right now we're looking at the property values as being like pretty high, and we're, we're, we're taking in high revenue. But if this trend in the next budget goes down, let's just say property values drop by a large percent, looking at these numbers here, how much of that will affect our mill rate? Because right now it's it looks good because we're we're taking in a lot of money from this huge spike in property value. 
and my concern is long term um, I've seen properties go up and down in this area and right now they're up but what, what, what could happen well we're only required to do a reevaluation of real estate every five years so there won't be changes to the real estate until we perform another evaluation on October 1 of 2026 the real estate values unless you were to take out a building a permit and make an addition or something like that but town-wide they would not change until we have the uh, next revaluation okay so in five years the effects depending if these numbers drop mm -hmm. significantly could have a, 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 a greater impact on that rate depending on what the other numbers are doing at the time so right depends on what your appropriations are and what your revenues are right and th that's such something I think that needs to be talked about thinking about it because it's great right now that you know we're taxpayers are being taxed at a high rate and paying a lot because the value went up but um, looking at our project as we keep increasing line items it's not sustainable long term so in five years when folks that increase certain line items remember these numbers because the effect if your property doesn't match that then it's going to have a huge impact or could depending so anyway thank you thank you for clarifying it sure Councilor Franco. Thank you. So, can you explain the process now? Because if we're approving this, because there are new people here and there has been, I know, confusion in the past years, what we're doing here is basically, from my understanding, is we're sending this to the RTM. Is that correct? With these numbers? Because the RTM can change things mm -hmm. on what they fund, and then it comes back to us, and then we go through this basically again to actually. Um, set mill rates and what we're going to use for fund balance because although we might say we're going to use fund balance and that when it comes back to us we can choose how much fund balance we would like to use and, and things of that nature is that correct can you just please explain that right so that what, is correct what, what we're actually doing tonight and sure process. what we're doing tonight is we're setting um what we call the tentative tax rate that's based on the adjustments the council has made to the budget and what revenues we think are coming in and how much tax revenue we need to balance the budget. It will now go to the RTM and the RTM has the right to make adjustments. They can um, cut the budget. Um, if the council had made cuts, they could restore up to with a, using a two-thirds vote. And we also in May what now is we have looked at the current year's um, estimates for revenues and the current year's estimates of expenditures. I will look at that again in May to see if we need to make any adjustments to that, if we think expenditures are going to be up or down, or if we have additional revenue or not revenue we had anticipated coming in. And so that will say uh, what we expect the net of operations will be for this year and what I think or what we think the mill, um, excuse me, not the mill rate, what the fund balance will be. And that would be. of fund balance based on the final budget and, um, approved by the RTM. Mr. Mayor, if I could, this is also a safeguard in case the RTM for some reason does not uh, review and come up with a number by the 20, 25th of May. So this stands if they don't deliver. Okay. Thank you. I believe that's per charter. Correct? It is per charter. Not to my knowledge. What? Has it ever happened? No. Uh, thank you. And it just as for serving on the RTM too, it also it could happen where um, if it was restored, worst case, it only can go as high as the num manager's number. It can't go above. Higher the two numbers, right? Right. So so looking at this worst case scenario, we would be back. We could be back to the original budget number. Would that be fair to say? Depending if the RTM restored and cut in ways that the manager did because um, it takes a two-thirds vote, but they can't go above the manager's line. So technically, the budget that the manager pre presented, that could be, uh, that's our worst case scenario that we could have. Yes, because we couldn't go any to. higher or lower than, I mean, we could go lower, but I mean, right. it couldn't change any more than technically that. Right. Mm -hmm. right. That's correct. Is that okay. correct? And, and they also can't change the funding source, so it's correct. not like they would change an ARPA one back to general okay. funds. Right. So. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for clarifying. Did that answer your question? Yes, thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Seeing no further discussion, I'll call for a vote. All in favor say aye. 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 <laughs> Opposed? No. Abstentions? 
That carries eight in favor, one opposed, Westervelt, zero abstaining. All right. I can read the next one, Mr. Mayor. Okay, thank you. Make a motion to adopt a resolution computing a tentative tax rate for FYE 2023 to pay expenses appropriations approved in the Mumford Cove Special Taxing District Fund budget as adopted by the Town Council. Whereas the Town Council adopted on April 26, 2022, a Mumford Cove District Fund budget providing for expenditures, appropriations, or expenses totaling $21,230, and estimate cash revenue ex exclusive of FYE 2023 current property taxes totaling $0. Resolved that a tax rate of point I'm sorry, of 0.28 mills is hereby determined as required by Chapter 9 of the Groton Town Charter and based on the following computations. Total Mumford Cove District Fund appropriations per budget approved by Council, $21,230. Less estimate, estimated amount to be appropriated from unassigned fund balance, $0. Less cash receipts exclusive of current property taxes, $0. Amount to be raised from property taxes, $21,230. Amount computed as follows, $21,230 divided by a net assessed valuation of $76,573,150 before Board of Assessment Adjustments divided by 99.3% collection rate multiplied by 1,000 equals 0 0.28 mills. So moved. Second, Franco. Moved by Gasiri, seconded by Franco. See no discussion. I'll call for a vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? That carries nine in favor, zero opposed, zero abstain. Okay, on to computation of tax rate for Groton Sewer District. Res resolved that the tax rate of 0 0.37 mills is hereby determined uh, as required by Chapter 9 of the Groton Town Charter and based on the following computations. Total Groton Sewer District Fund appropriations per budget approved by Council, $1,334,997. Less estimated amount to be appropriated for unassigned fund balance, $200,000. Less cash receipts exclusive of current property taxes, $5,330. Amount to be raised from property taxes. Point, point of inquiry, uh, uh, yep. Mayor, I think, uh, unless I'm lost, which I could be, I did, was this just read? Or oh, we're on the next one. We, I just want to make sure, because I want to make sure I'm Brown, hearing it again. It's the sewer <laughs> district. Not to okay. be rude or disrespectful. Not Mumford, right. we just did Mumford Co. Right. Okay, we're on that small was, cities. You started right. with resolved. That was correct. This is correct? Yeah, he, it is, because he okay. hit 1.3 in the okay. 2 million. Yes. So we're not reading the whole thing. You're just starting half. You should, like, yeah, you started with in the middle of it. I think the, re the whereas at the beginning um, was skipped. Right, which is optional. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You're just reading from you don't resolve have to read down. Out the whereas is yeah. not required. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. No, I'm confused. I got Point of information. Yeah. <laughs> um, um. Right. No, I'm just reading the correct one, right? Yeah. yeah. Yes. And I don't have to read the whereas. No. Right. We've, right. We've had a legal opinion on that before. You've already yes. gone down, you mm -hmm. down to the point line. I think you started. Point of information. What's your point of information? I think it's just the confusion is past practice has usually been to read the whole thing. And especially because it's dealing with taxes and the budget and things of that nature. It's usually you read the whole thing and then I think that just... All right, I can read the whole thing. What I can, I recall as my time on council is past practice. Thank you. Okay. Resolution computing a tentative tax rate for FYE 2023 to pay expenses, appropriations approved in the Groton Sewer District Fund budget as adopted by the town council. Whereas the town council adopted on April 26, 2022, a Groton Sewer District Fund budget providing for expenditures, 
appropriations or expenses totaling one million three hundred thirty four thousand nine hundred ninety seven dollars and estimated cash revenue exclusive of FYE 2023 current property taxes totaling $5,330. Be resolved that a tax rate of 0 0.37 mills is hereby determined as required by Chapter 9 of the Groton Town Charter and based on the following computations, total Groton Sewer District Fund appropriations per budget approved by Council $1,334,997 less estimated amount to be appropriated from unassigned fund balance $200,000, less cash receipts exclusive of current property taxes $5,330, amount to be raised from property taxes $1,129,667, amount computed as follows $1,129,667 divided by net assessed valuation of $3,077,000,000. $223,106 before Board of Assessment adjustments and excludes motor vehicles divided by the 99.6% collection rate multiplied by 1,000 0.37 mills. So moved. Second. Moved by Melendez, seconded by Franco. Okay. Seeing no discussion, I'll call for a vote. All in favor say aye. 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 <laughs> Opposed? Abstentions? That carries unanimously. Nine in favor, zero opposed, zero abstaining. Thank you. Thank you. On to small cities community development block grant sending public hearings. Page seven. Okay. Resolution to seek funds from the Small Cities Community Development Block Grants CDBG Program 2022 application. Whereas the United States Department of Housing and Urban Development allocates an annual amount of funds to the state of Connecticut for the purposes of distribution under the CDBG programs, a competitive program for eligible municipalities and whereas in 2019 the town of Groton was awarded a grant of 1,500,000 for public housing moder modernization at Mystic River Homes, an independent elderly disabled low income housing provider which is currently under construction and planned to be completed in June of 2022 and whereas this year's $2 million CDBG grant request, the maximum allowable grant funding we're at available for a single housing authority under the Small Cities Community Block Grant Program will be sought to provide unit updates and install a new backup generator as well as other housing and energy improvements at Groton Housing Authority, Grasso Gardens, and whereas the cost to write the grant proposal is less than $5,000 and is reimbursable through the Small Cities CDBG Program to the nonprofit Eastern Connecticut Housing Authority, ECHO, the match for this project will be provided by Groton Housing Authority from their already established funds along with the Town of Groton program income funds. And the grant will be administered through a three-party relationship with the Town of Groton, Groton Housing Authority, and the Eastern Connecticut Housing Opportunities. And whereas the, the Connecticut Department of Housing, DOH, application deadline is May 20th, 2022, and prior to the submission of this application, DOH requires the town to conduct a public hearing to satisfy citizen participation requirements. Now, therefore, it be resolved that the town council will hold a public hearing on the Town of Groton Small Cities Community Development Block Grant 2019 application on Tuesday, May 3rd, 2022, at 6.30 p.m. at Thrive 55 Living Center. Groton Senior Center in the main room and via a hybrid virtual Zoom meeting. I so move. Second, Jones. Moved by Franco, seconded by Jones. Councilor Borlaug. Thank you. Um, I, I think I remember this from other years. Do we are we getting any other applicants that were applying, or is it still because Sacred Hearts on here every year? Different one. How, is this the different one? I'm thinking of a different one. The next okay. one. Neighborhood assistant is, is what you're thinking of. Mm. Yes, I am. I skipped a page. Thank you for. Okay. All right. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Nothing else. They're very similar. Yeah. All right. 
Okay, let's see no further discussion. I'll call for a vote. All in favor say aye. 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 <laughs> Opposed? Abstentions? That carries unanimously nine in favor, zero opposed, zero abstaining. Okay. On to Neighborhood Assistance Act 2022, setting public hearing, page eight. Okay. A resolution to set a public hearing for the 2022 Neighborhood Assistance Act proposals, whereas the town of Groton has received proposals from the Bill Memorial Library, Community of Hope, Odd Fellows Home, DBA Fairview, Riverfront Children's Center, and Sacred Heart School for the 2022 Neighborhood Assistance Act and whereas the Town of Groton Department of Planning and Development Services received a proposal from each of these entities to achieve tax credit savings on energy efficiency and energy conservation projects. And whereas the Town of Groton Office of Planning and Development Services is responsible for the scheduling, scheduling appropriate public hearings with the Town Council to review said proposals and Whereas the Town of Groton Office in Planning and Development Services supports all of these energy efficiency and energy conservation proposals from the Bill Memorial Library, Community of Hope, Odd Fellows Home, DBA Fairview, Riverfront Children's Center, and Sacred Heart School, and acknowledges that the post program review will be their responsibility now, therefore, be it resolved that the Town Council hereby sets a public hearing for the 2022 Neighborhood Assistance Act on Tuesday, May 3rd, 2022, at 6 30 p.m. at Thrive 55 Plus Living Center, Groton Senior Center, in the main room and via hybrid virtual Zoom meeting. Second, so Kasiri. Moved by, second Parker. Moved by Jones, seconded by Kasiri. Council Forlong. Um, thanks. I just wanted to check, because um, it's the same names that come on here every year. Is there any outreach to try to, I know this was brought up before, but every year we give Sacred Heart money. Like, I mean, I, I think these were set up to kind of really fan out is the way that I'm reading it. And it's the same. There's a mailing list that goes to many other agencies. Did I we guess. add any more this year? I know um, that was something that they said, oh, they're going to, the lady had stated she was new. They were going to do a deeper dive this year. Was that dive ever, I mean, was she there? She went through the list to make sure we had everyone she could think of that was eligible, but Paige, if you have anything to add. Because it would be nice to see, I, I saw other towns, there's some people that come back, but they try to uh, distribute them in ways in which they're bringing in new applicants which shows you know that you're really trying to change the trajectory um it, it, it's great that we're giving some of these agencies year after year but it, you know it would be nice to help you know to make sure that we're we're not missing something so just yeah we're page Brock, economic <laughs> and development manager um, we're always interested in adding to the list um we've asked if there are additional agencies that people would like to submit please do so um, the list is expanding, um, and to my knowledge, uh, we could add more projects. We could have um, different projects that would come forward, um, but I think that the, the big takeaway at this point is that we're getting more projects now than we did years past, but we're always looking to improve. So if there are additional names, we certainly would add them to the list. Yeah, and we did send that out after last year's round to, for everyone to see if that any, we could do that again to see if there's any you know of that we're missing. Do you guys do any public um, postings that you're accepting applications for this at a certain time of the year that folks should look for? Um, we actually do notification to those that are on the listing. Do you ever do a public notification like in the paper or any you know public resource that's given out to everybody that people can research? I believe we do send a notification out. Yeah, but nothing is in the newspaper or any public documents like that other than the list that you guys already have. Because with my so. research, it would, be, it would be great, and I asked this last year, it, you know, do a public notice, like and, and, and something in the paper to state that you guys are taking application, who qualifies for these, and that would also bro broaden your net um, so folks can see that. A lot of agencies that really are in need don't realize these are available, and so it would be a great, simple thing to do, simple newspaper article, press release that you guys are taking the applications, and um, that would be really helpful, and I'd, I'd love to see that. I think it's a great opportunity, and I'd like to see the net kind of cast a little lighter. Thank you. Okay. See no 
no further discussion, I'll call for a vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? That carries unanimously. Nine in favor, zero opposed, zero abstain. On to setting a public hearing on an ordinance changing and redefining the voting districts, page nine. Resolved that the town council will hold a public hearing on an ordinance changing and redefining the voting districts on Tuesday, May 3rd, 2022 at 6.30 p.m. at Thrive 55 Plus Living Center, Groton Senior Center in the main room and via a hybrid virtual Zoom meeting. So moved. Second. Moved by Melinda, seconded by Baumgartner. Council Bordelon? Uh, yes, uh, I just wondering, I know that voter registration's not here. Um, this will be obviously posted, um, but the areas that in particular that were identified as being switched, um, are we gonna send out a card to them letting them know there's a public hearing about the change? Not just that there's a change, but I think we should mm. definitely uh, kind of reach them. We, ha we identified them on the map. Mm. We should let them know a lot of folks aren't looking for this. Um, yeah, yeah. Any way that we could try to would be helpful. If nothing else, get this on um, social media, Facebook. Um, also, um, a little bit more of an explanation in the write-up might oh, be. there's definitely more of an explanation yeah, in the write-up. <laughs> um, and I think more news press release on this because folks may have questions and they might not be aware and I definitely don't want to um, miss uh, voter access rights yeah. and so any way we can get this there's nothing about it on Facebook on our town page nothing on any of the well, there will um, be after tonight yeah so I'm just saying yeah, yeah we'll make sure that the more the better <laughs> and if we're not going to send a postcard to those that, people that are changing that's up to the town I, I don't do that but I, I would think it would be nice to send a direct card to them letting them know that they had been identified as a home that is part of the redistricting plan that's coming forward and there will be a public hearing and it would be very simple and I would recommend that the town do that um, it would be very helpful thank you I don't think we could get it done in time for next week no. right I, again that's mm -hmm. the, the timing of this um, it's not a normal this is the first time it's coming before me and so I'm making my yeah. suggestion and it would be nice if you could do it thank you but we'll definitely make sure it's on uh, social media and the website thank you okay Seeing no further discussion, I'll call for a vote. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. <laughs> that, I believe Councilor Parker was in favor. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, opposed? Abstention? I'm here. <laughs> and you're voting in favor, correct? I'm voting in favor. Thank you. <laughs> That's nine in favor, zero opposed, zero abstaining. Okay, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion, motion to, to adjourn. adjourn. Second. Okay, moved by. Uh, no motion to adjourn. It's recess now. No, we're, no, we're in the this council. One is that was the council meeting. Either adjourning us or done. We'll come back to cow now. Moved by Bordelon, seconded by uh, Franco. Franco. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? The carries unanimous seen nine in favor, zero opposed, zero abstaining. We are adjourned at 8.08. <laughs> Okay, so we're back from recess at 8.09. On to 2022-266 American Rescue Plan, Coronavirus State and Local Fiscal Recovery Funds uh, Allocation Strategy. make a motion to recommend a resolution to create the five recovery category buckets proposed by the long-term recovery committee and a sixth administrative bucket and accepting the standard allowance in recognition of up to $10 million of lost revenue. In addition, the town will allocate other unencumbered funds while reserving $1.4 million uh, dollars for the City of Groton Seawall project in, in case needed, consistent with the proposed needs assessment for future allocation of each bucket category via an application and review process with the application issuance phase to begin in May of 2022. So moved. 
Second, Kasiri. Second, Parker. Moved by Melendez, seconded by Parker. So we have uh, Director Reiner. Okay, uh, good evening. Uh, with me here tonight is uh, Paige Bronk, our Economic and Community Development Manager, as well as um, Kevin Fitzgerald, our ARPA coordinator. So tonight we're gonna talk a little bit about kind of giving an overview of where we are with ARPA, what ARPA is, what the funding uh, is available for, the outreach process that we've taken, talk a little bit about the long-term recovery committee process, uh, our eligibility, those buckets, the, the standard allocation, I keep wanting to say standard deduction, I'm still in tax mode, uh, as well as then kind of wrapping it up with why we're moving forward with the two recommendations we have tonight, again, about that standard allocation and those buckets. So, you know, first of all, I think everybody is aware at this point in time that the town of Groton is set to receive approximately $8.6 million in coronavirus state and local fiscal, fiscal recovery funds. And that is then setting us up, you know, as a town, we spoke a lot about how we don't want to just spend that money, but we want to invest that money. And through that process, we had the long-term recovery committee uh, assist with a lot of those initial discussions. Staff uh, has been doing an extensive amount of outreach, which uh, Kevin will go over in great detail in a few minutes, as well as then how do we move forward from tonight in putting that uh, funding into those buckets that the town council, sorry, the long-term recovery committee, the council, and then the RTM would all help uh, set that money aside through some of it through budgetary process and some of it through the uh, ARPA allocation process. So um, with that, I'm going to hand it over to Paige. He's going to get uh, a little bit more detail on where we are, and then uh, Kevin will talk a little bit about the, out the outreach. And just to mention, uh, we had previously sent out the list of outreach actions, but I do have a hard copy if anybody would like a hard copy. Yeah, I did forget to mention that there are a couple of attachments with that referral, uh, including the outreach and uh, some of where the funding has already been allocated. All right, thank you. <clears throat> okay, so we're going to kind of take a turn at um, some component of this presentation tonight. Um, John already covered the, the amount of funding that's John, being... John, do you have another one? Oh, sorry. <clears throat> the amount of funding that is being allocated to the town of Groton. <laughs> Um, and it's important to realize we are a non-entitlement community in comparison to a large city that might be an entitlement community that receives funding um, on that scale. We're, we're treated differently because we are a smaller community. Uh, this funding comes from the U.S. Department of the Treasury. Uh, we receive it over a two-year period of time. Uh, so we don't receive it all in one tranche. It actually gets broken into two parts. Um, there are four general key eligible uses for the funding. Public sector revenues, public health and economic response, paying for essential workers, and also uh, infrastructure. Um, in summary, as you'll find in the referral, we, we've categorized that into three um, descriptions. Basically, the first, fight the pandemic and support families and businesses struggling with it, uh, with public health and economic impacts. Secondly, maintain vital public services, even amid declines in revenue resulting from the crisis. Third, build a strong, resilient, and equitable recovery by making investments that support long-term growth and opportunity. Um, there are two documents that do you, do you have a handout for this at all? Do you have a handout for this? It's in the referral. It's only all in here? That language is actually taken right from the referral. But all of that, I, I don't know, I just thought there was possibly gonna be a presentation or something because people at home don't have all this in front of them. So it'd be helpful if we had something to like project up for folks to see at home, if possible. But um, you know, that's fine. Basically, I'm extracting the notes from the referral. I understand that, but it's 
I'm, it's hard to follow without, but that's fine. Thank you. Uh, just moving on, basically, uh, there are two documents that the U.S. Treasury has provided to local governments. The first one was in 2021. Uh, that was referred to as the interim rule. And the second one, most recently, um, is the final rule. That was January of 2022. These are, these are huge documents, and, and Kevin's got a copy of... ...to understand the program. Um, the final rule, one of the greatest benefits from that is it offers flexibility, and particularly in regard to municipal revenue loss. Um, and that was something that John had mentioned a second ago, that um, the standard allowance provided was provided in this final rule for smaller communities like Croton to allow that flexibility and allowable uses of funds. Um, that basically broadened the eligible uses that are allowed by a municipality. Um, and it also allowed us to avoid a complicated full revenue loss calculation. Uh, we learned about this in, in January. Um, so in taking the $10 million standard allowance as referenced in the, in the referral, this enables Groton to use funds as a general government services item for community benefit. Uh, a recent quote that um, we actually just learned over the past few days uh, in doing more research, I, I think it captures where we're going with this, um, this overall standard allowance. This came straight from the Treasury. Uh, it states, if you receive less than 10 million, you should claim your entire amount under revenue loss. There is no added benefit for you or the Treasury of not receiving the streamlined reporting path under the standard allowance. Secondly, the revenue loss is a presumption even if communities did not experience a loss in revenue. The standard allowance provides a simplified and streamlined structure for smaller communities to report their allocations under government services. So that's a backdrop um, for ARPA to date. And, and one of the really important parts of our program in Groton was to deal with public outreach. Um, we actually believe we've done more public outreach in Groton than other communities in the area. Um, Kevin has spent a significant amount of time doing that outreach, but the outreach actually began prior to him. We are asking him to make some comments, um, and I, one of the handouts that you received tonight gives you details regarding the outreach, but uh, I would like him to explain uh, what he's been working on. Our, com excuse, our campaign employed a range of outreach methods to share our call to action with the Groton community. Uh, we ultimately received 120 responses, and on our Greater Groton page received 1,620 page views, with the average user spending 11 minutes and 26 seconds to complete the budget simulator. I'd like to share the range of tactics that we employed to make the budget simulator top of mind for residents across town. And I'd like to start with the Greater Groton website. Our campaign launched with the creation of our Bang the Table website, which can be found at www.greatergroton.com. This resource serves as our home base for the outreach campaign. The Greater Ground website hosts a page dedicated to the American Rescue Plan with a direct link for visit visitors to reach the budget simulator. Next, I'd like to discuss our direct mailer, which we sent out in January. This was the next step in our outreach campaign, and OPDS designed a community-wide mailer was sent to 13,069 households in Groton. The mailer was designed to direct residents to the greatergroton.com website and features our call to action. Uh, the mailer is frequently cited by residents in my tabling efforts and community outreach, and I would recognize it as a significant victory in our efforts to familiarize the Groton community with the Greater Groton platform. For media, our campaign achieved an early win with a feature in the New London Day. And in a follow-up story in the Groton Times, I credit that coverage as cornerstones in our campaign and an asset to directly invite residents to use the budget simulator through our community's newspaper of record. I also uh, created a door knocking strategy and was on the lookout for high density neighborhoods and complexes around Groton. Um, I delivered our budget simulator materials and the call to action to hundreds of doorsteps around our community to invite community members to 
contribute to the budget simulator. I'd next like to talk about our social media strategy. Uh, over the past few months, we've been constantly on the hunt for new Groton community and neighborhood specific social media channels to present our call to action and to cover easy access to the, to offer easy access to the budget simulator. Town staff have repeatedly shared the campaign on the digital town square and with posts on the Groton Community Forum and the What's Happening No Inc, GLP and Mystic page and on the Groton Patches social media and website. Early on in the campaign, I found that I still had access to my Yukon Daily Digest webpage, and I used that opportunity to share several campus-wide calls to action uh, with all staff and students at the Avery Point campus. And I'd also like to point to our community met partners who have been key contributors, sharing our outreach effort through social media. Our, community, our outreach campaign involved a range of community partners sharing the campaign with their constituencies. I'd like to recognize the Groton Long Point Association, the City of Groton, and the Parks and Recreation Department for their efforts to share our call to action to complete the budget simulator. Our campaign also included collaborations with the Groton Public Library and Thrive 55 Plus, which hosted stations with computers for community members to complete the budget simulator at popular destinations around town. I frequently use these stations to share the budget simulator at larger community events, which was part of our broader tabling strategy to share the campaign with residents at open houses, parades, parties, public forums, and large gatherings across the Groton community. Finally, I'd like to point to the community partners, such as the Groton Mystic, Greater Mystic Chamber of Commerce and the Groton Subbase, who included the budget simulator materials at many of their events and shared our call to action with their communities. Based on these efforts to reach Groton residents through social media, tabling, door knocking, and articles in the day, we believe that the Budget Simulator Average Campaign is the most comprehensive call to action ever executed by the Town of Groton. Thank you. Thank you, Kevin. Um, just moving along um, more in the referral, basically the next portion of the referral deals with the recovery category buckets. These align with the goals of the final rule, um, and the buckets are categorized as human services, and, and, and each one of these is defined within the referral as well. Um, that would be page three of five. Human services, the second one, infrastructure, transportation, third, parks and recreation, the fourth, arts and culture, the fifth, economic development and resiliency, and the sixth uh, was added, uh, which is basically for the American Recovery Plan Administration. Um, it's important to realize that these buckets were forwarded to the town council as a result of review by the long-term recovery committee. Uh, that was done on March 23rd, uh, and there was a vote to recommend these to the town council, which brings us here tonight. Um, during that period of time in advancing these buckets to the town council, the council's begun their, their budget process, and there were allocations of certain project funds, um, mostly through the CIP, uh, through budgetary allocations. These, these projects are listed within the referral by bucket um, so that they would properly align. Um, note that there's one um, item, sidewalk infrastructure, that's listed in the final spreadsheet. Yeah. but uh, actually uh, was inadvertently left out of the narrative uh, under infrastructure transportation. That does not impact the overall tally or the sum, but wanted to bring that to your attention. Um, also, we did add in uh, at this point the $1.4 million for the city of Groton Seawall. Um, obviously, if, if that is funded, the balance remains as is. If it's not, then the balance is reduced. Um, the, the total, including the seawall, is roughly $5.2 million. Uh, excluding the seawall would be roughly $3.9 So 
moving forward into the recommendations um, of the referral, you'll note on page five, there are two detailed recommendations. We are recommending both. The first pertains to the standard allowance, which we've discussed. Uh, we are definitely recommending um, pursuing the standard allowance as we move forward in dealing with the April 30th reporting to the U.S. Treasury. The second pertains to the creation of the five recovery category buckets, which I had just referenced, uh, as recommended by the Long-Term Recovery Committee and also the sixth administrative bucket. Um, I believe that rounds out our recommendation. Thank you. Any questions from the council? Council Baumgartner? Yes. Um, first and foremost, thank you very much for your um, thank you very much for your very in-depth um, presentation and uh, special recognition recognition to Kevin, um, one of our newer town employees who, who has been hard at work, obviously uh, doing a lot of outreach, as you cited, um, and uh, been at several events where you've been. Um, uh, and with obviously um, leaflets and information regarding, um, you know, how we best spend our ARPA dollars. We've been talking about it for some time now, and um, I think, you know, both myself, Councilor Bordelon, um, Mayor Melendez, we serve on the long-term recovery committee meeting, and we, uh, along with the rest of the committee, recommended those five buckets, um, which I think uh, <coughs> certainly uh, represent the areas we need to make investments in, um, you know, with those federal dollars. Um, I have a, I'll probably go through two rounds of questioning, um, but want to start with some of the funds that we can, uh, or projects that we will potentially spend. Um, I understand that uh, there are three areas where we have, um, could propose allocations to that would be a 1.4 million dollar uh, city of Groton seawall, um, the 895,000 uh, that we approved in terms of town facilities improvements. I think the lion's share are uh, the Sutton Park improvements, and then the Pequannock Bridge traffic light uh, project, which is uh, 430,000. Um, in terms of the final two. Um, we approved utilizing ARPA funds, but I, um, in the budget process. But what what are the next steps uh, in terms of council action? In terms of what was approved in the budget, once they make it to the budget, that's finalized. However, it's worth pointing out, RTM and committee has uh, lowered some of these. So if that holds true, then which ones? Uh, for one thing, the 800 as of right now, the 895,000 for the town facilities improvements, which is the boilers. I think there's a little bit left for something else there for the planning of the building, but the majority of it was cut in committee, so we'll see what happens in the in the full uh, RTM. And the reasoning was uh, to look more at energy efficient. Um, but that, that didn't impact the Sutton Park improvements, correct? No. Okay. No. There's a couple other little things that were cut. And, and I ask in, in large part because those were three areas that during budget season, season we talked in nauseam about potential funding streams. Obviously, you know, should there be a, a situation where, say, for a seawall, we get some money from the feds in a, in a different capacity or, uh, say, the state government. Um, today, um, I was reading the uh, Senate is debating SB4, which is a comprehensive um, clean air, or, you know, omnibus. Uh, bill, if you will, and part of it is uh, creating a um, one one reform with it is creating a grant program where you could fund local uh, traffic signal improvements. Um, and there currently isn't any such DOT grant, which would be certainly welcomed. Um, you know, we certainly would have welcomed that uh, ahead of time. Um, but uh, you know, in the case that gr that grant program is created and, and Groton applies, could and say receives a grant for traffic signals, uh, what is the process for diverting uh, ARPA fund allocations? Um, we would just come back to the council to accept. You have to, we have to accept the grant, and then we would just, as part of that motion and, re and resolution, we would release those back into the 
fund balance of the ARPA. So as long as those funds are unexpended, you can do that? Yeah. But the minute they, even if you put a shovel in the ground, kind of can, can you ever walk it back? Uh, I think to some point, depending on where, I, I'd want to talk to Greg, though, more about it, Kevin and Paige. I think, you know, I, I think uh, if you haven't actually spent the money and done certain work, you probably could. But I'd want to look heavily into that. And I only ask that because uh, those projects represent a, a, at least in some cases an eighth, uh, or when you add them all up, maybe a, a sixth or fifth of, of the total investment. And um, you know, obviously things that, that should get done either way, um, but want to make sure that if there are other funding streams that come up within the next year or two that we don't hinder our ability to invest in other areas because you know, there are so many proposals coming our way from, you know, nonprofits or, you know, within town government itself um, for capital projects, et cetera. Um, yeah, how am I doing for time? I'm over. Okay. Thank you. If I could just yeah. make a, a short comment on that. So we are definitely looking to try and invest in Groton and try to stretch our investments as be the best we can. So while we're going through this process, um, we're also looking at other grant opportunities. Um, Kevin's doing that. We came before the council and talked about the community challenge grant, for example. Mm -hmm. We are looking at other opportunities to best leverage and get more investment in Groton using our ARPA dollars. Thank you. Thank you. I have a quick question. Um, I see you have two recommendations here. Um, is the first recommendation actually included in this motion? Yes. Oh, sorry. Uh, uh, that uh, the first recommendation of uh, voting to accept accept the standard allowance that was uh, inadvertently left out of the original motion, oh, and that was the revised you. one Great. that the manager okay. had sent out today. Thank you. Thank you, Council Franco. Thank you. I had all the same same question there, because um, there's recommendation one, recommendation two, and then the motion is missing the standard. So one of the questions. That, so, do you have a print copy of the um, yeah. amended motion? Yeah. And I had emailed it earlier. Would we like to put that on the floor and then? I already did. This is actually the one I read. I just forgot that I had done that. <laughs> Oh, you read this one? Yeah. Except, okay, I'm sorry. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so, accepting the standard allowance um, is basically like when you do your taxes, you get the standard deduction instead of itemizing. Is that sort of what we're doing here? Is that what they're saying? Um, Kevin actually could comment on that, but my, my general comment is yes. That's the way that I actually look at it. It's a lot simpler to take the standard allowance versus doing the more lengthy uh, revenue loss calculations. Kevin, did you have any comment on that? I would add that uh, they, the Treasury created the standard allowance for governments of grant size, um, just with the consideration on the uh, governments who would use the uh, alternative of uh, the calculation that they had initially created would be looking at much more complex revenue streams. Um, so creating this option for non-entitlement units um, carries that presumption that there was a revenue loss and they encourage communities to claim that in their filing. Okay, thank you. And then, um, so it, it would, in recommendation number two, it basically states in there that um, there's, there would be an application review process for the application issuance phase that begins in May 2022. So we would still receive applications, even if we accept the standard allowance, we'd still receive the applications from the community members that are looking for certain types of funds to help their organization. Is that correct? Uh, that is correct. And yeah, uh, one item we didn't really talk too much about is the next steps after moving forward with this process. And uh, part of that is going to be uh, closing that portal for the um, Greater Groton, at least the portion on the, um, the, the funding allocation tool and we'll have a, a set date of when we want to end that for the, the feedback and then shortly thereafter releasing the application for community 
uh, organizations or others that would be eligible to submit uh, funding for this. It should also be mentioned that even the um, town CIP projects as they get funded, uh, we envision those filling out an application too, just so that we have the proper paperwork in hand and when we're doing the accounting and all the documentation for reporting back to the feds, all of our ducks are in a row. Right, because even though we take the standard allowance, we would still have to document everything that we're doing, correct? Correct. And then, Mr. Burt, mm -hmm. I have asked at a town council meeting before, and I'm not trying to put you on the spot, but the council hasn't rec like approved the buckets. Like that was must have been the, no, the that's recovery part of what, committee. That's part of what this is. Long term recovery right. recommended it to because us. I don't like it was mentioned that the council had approved the bucket system, and I don't remember ever doing that before. And it was suggested that the council oh, had the process with that we're going to do buckets was approved by the council, <laughs> but now this is actually saying what the buckets. Okay, because I don't. Yeah. Okay, I just wanted to make sure because I was told it was had been approved, and I don't recall. I didn't recall that. Mm -hmm. So thank you, and then um. So if there is, if there is something that comes forward and it doesn't look like it fits in one of these buckets, can we? How do you make it fit in a bucket then? Let's just say, for example, um, first responders during COVID, like during the lockdown, they were, um, you know, going into people's homes while the rest of us were staying at home on a lockdown, and it was during very crazy times and they didn't have the right PPEs and all these other things and there's potential for hazard pay to reward them for all that they did for our community. You know, firefighters, EMS and things of that nature, um, police. Um, so where would that fit into like one of these buckets? Like if, um, the, uh, like the, the pay would go under the administrative bucket. Administrative. Yeah. I mean, we, 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 you know, we, we've council. been collecting ideas for a year <laughs> and um, we've got a lengthy list of possible things that we've and pretty much anything I think that would come up would fit in one of the buckets okay mm -hmm. just because the way it looks it's it could certainly be altered if there's something wild we've never thought of in the council wanting to do it I'm, you know council could amend the buckets or do what they want okay um, that sounds good um, I'm sure I'm out of time right now so you got time oh I do you got a minute okay and then um so when you the simulator from maybe it's just the way I'm reading this but the response you received were people basically stating that they would like the majority of the money to be spent on infrastructure and public buildings public building adaptations is that like the top two things is that what this spreadsheet is saying to me yes the top allocations when they finally uh, balance the budget in the portal and that's um, <coughs> In the, even in the starting the portal, not all categories had the same amount allocated to them, but those are just the buckets that people, when they balance the budget, push them towards. Okay, so the majority of the people that did respond, from what you're saying, are infrastructure improvements and public building adaptation, which I think even um, by us choosing to put them allocate our funding while we did the budget is what our community was asking us basically to do. And um, when we were saying, let's fund, you know, the buildings and infrastructure and things of that nature, that's what our community seemed to have wanted us to do anyway. I, I think that's accurate. I just wanted to maybe refine that somewhat. The, an individual who goes on the budget simulator, and we had roughly 1,000, they have a choice to engage after they learn about the tool and if they engage, they're given a template, basically, and they, uh, these aren't just check boxes, they're asked to increase or decrease. So these categories were provided to them and they were asked to basically modify accordingly. So we would measure how they would alter the initial number, whether it went up, whether it went down, and that information is, is provided in the packet as well. All right. Well, it just reinforces that I what I think is that we've been doing the right thing. So thank you very much. Thank you. Council Bordelon. Uh, thank you. Um, to the budget simulator, um, you stated that 1,000 were on. How many actually completed the simulator? 120. Right. So only 120. As someone who served in the long-term committee, 
it's not a criticism, but it was a it was a concern that um, you know it was a great software, but a lot of folks out of the thousand weren't completing it, and that you know doesn't really reflect. Um, 120 people do not represent uh, almost 50,000 uh, population in our community, unfortunately. Um, and I know it was hard to get people to respond, even with all your due diligence, um, even with some of the thoughts that had gone forward. So only 120 actually completed it. My thing is, as someone who served on this committee, I, I like the option that is presented now um, for you know smaller municipalities, but some can criticize that and say then the way in which the funds are allocated changes the momentum in some ways. So it could be good and bad. Um, it really is a perspective. I think the outcome in the end um, has pros and cons both ways. Um, I also think, when I think of the pandemic, I think of like directly influencing um, the, the things that folks spoke about was, you know, the, the, the we talk about the loss. Groton fared quite nicely in comparison to some other towns. So um, this is money that we're kind of getting, um, but I was a little concerned because we have not had a public hearing at all to talk to folks um, about these buckets um, that we had identified. And I think that is a strong, as you know, only 120 did the simulator, it'd be great to have had this, have a public hearing or a public presentation where people could speak to these proposed buckets before the council voted, which really has not happened. Um, so I have concerns with that. Um, also, when I think of the pandemic, I think of the, the, the most vulnerable. People got sick. We can talk about infrastructure, but our infrastructure was a problem before a pandemic came on, came to be. So as a result, we're getting extra funds to support towns because people died and got very sick and lost jobs. And so this is nice, and we should be thankful. But when I look at these numbers that are supposedly already allocated, only $150,000 on the paper in front of me is going to human services, thus far identified. Seawall, which is great, I, I totally support that, but I'm just saying these were problems we had in this town before people died in our community because of COVID. And I guess I'm concerned where these balances are and where our head is. As a councilor stated, infrastructure seems to be an issue, you know, a concern that people have, 120 people who took the survey. But my in the urban areas is the loss of life, access to good quality health care, food, and other things that they're dealing with. Infrastructure is kind of in the back, back of their mind. And so I just had hoped that this budget or this ARPA was going to be addressing some of those concerns in our, con our community at a higher level. Um, and I don't see that here. I, I think it's great that we're gonna fix the light, but we had the light as a problem before we knew we were gonna get ARPA funds. The seawall was a problem before we were gonna get ARPA funds. So I just don't, I'm a little concerned that we're throwing it all into that um, and not really looking at the big pictures of Groton and, and, and really funding, not just what's coming out of human services. What other things are we doing to support those areas of concern of high need? And I would love that one of these areas would address that in a greater magnitude. I also had trouble during the budget allocating ARPA funds before we approve our buckets. We were already taking the money and, and, and budgeting it in and during the budget again with no public comment or hearing. I just think that we should have something. The, the folks in the community, we're getting this money because of our community. And I think that they should be a strong um, voice in that. And I think we should, we deserve the right to give them a chance to come speak before us about what's being presented before voting on it. That's what I'll talk, I'll, I'll yield for now. Thank you. Thank you. And, or is there a, I guess my last question, is there a public hearing or comment to talk about your proposed buckets with the community? Well, that's up to the council. Mm. Council, I think that there's been significant outreach as we've discussed. It's been going on for months. Mm -hmm. That included at the long-term recovery committee as well. But there's been um, no final and then the presentation. Other part of it is that we're not done yet. Yeah. Um, I think we've explained that mm -hmm. we're interested in actually issuing, closing mm -hmm. the budget simulator, and issuing the application. We we have been contacted by numerous individuals and organizations over the months explaining um, that they have certain needs. We have visited many and we're interested to actually release that application so that we can actually hear from the community at large. 
Yeah, I think, I mean, at this rate at 120, I would close the simulator and maybe try to an actual public where people can talk about these buckets now that we're identifying them. So I would be in support, and I hope the council would support having some type of public input where we present these ARPA funds and have people come out and speak to them. Council Kasirian. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. First of all, I just wanted to commend your department for the public outreach that you did. I mean, this is amazing, amazing. Um, this is public comment, because I'm assuming that you didn't just have the budget simulator up there and you didn't explain it. You explained the budget simulator to these people, correct? Yeah, shared the, um, the purpose of it and the call to action and um, welcomed them to fill it out as well. Right, right. And I mean, I'm, you were at events, you knocked doors, you posted notices, you talked to colleges, you were at stores, libraries, social media, Mystic Irish Parade. I mean, these are large, obvious groups of people that you tried to target every type of demographic in, in Groton, correct? Yes. Okay, great. All right. Um, as our ARPA coordinator, Okay. Do you see any red flags? Because you're our specialist. Do you see any red flags with what the council has already kind of allocated ARPA money for? When I reviewed the allocations, I saw, found that they all were in compliance with the final rule, particularly under the general government services category, which provided that flexibility to <coughs> accommodate for unique needs in Grant. Wonderful. Okay, great. And I just wanted to thank um, you and your department for also showing how they fall into the categories. I mean, you literally went through it and broke down human services, infrastructure with the seawall, town facilities improvements, Bequanic Bridge traffic light. You went through and talked about the arts and culture, and you broke down how every single CIP that we used ARPA funds for fit into these categories. And I just wanted to thank you for doing that and demonstrating that these really are community needs, that these are um, approved by ARPA funding. And um, just again, thank you. I mean, this is just astonishing and kudos to your department. Thank you. I, I just wanted to mention that these categories don't limit the application. They'll fall under one of those categories in there. We, you know, we want you know we want good ideas, you know, whatever they are. It's this is just something more to keep in mind, uh, you know, for the LTRs, the Long Term Recovery Community and Council, as you're reviewing applications. Um, it's by no means limiting anything. The council will end up uh, allocating money to whatever they think is appropriate. Councilor Jones. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I want to um, echo. Councilor Kasiri's comments on the amount of effort. I know every time we show up here at the Senior Center, you're standing outside <laughs> meeting people all the time. So you've been very, very visible and, and we're seeing it. And um, also, the, just you have, just reading through this list, you're out almost every day or every other day at some place around the town, so doing something. Um, the other thing I just wanted to remind everybody is that we still have quite a bit of money left. This isn't, we kind of treat this as if this is the pile of money. It isn't the pile of money. We have another significant pile. This is just one portion of it. So for many of the other things that we may come up with or that people apply for, um, there's plenty of money still left to go into many different um, directions of, of need in our community. So. Um, I don't want people to forget that we didn't spend it all. We, we still have quite a bit to go. So, thank you. I just thank, and thank you for all the effort that you've done to put this all together. So, all right, Councilman Pride. Yes. Uh, <clears throat> thank you for putting this together. It's very well consolidated. I, I am somewhat uh, somewhat familiar with the process. I'm in the process of submitting new lines or perform, which is due April 30th. So I'm very familiar with the details that I have to go into this. A uh, couple things. Just want to comment because I, I have a question of clarification. But before that, the standard allocation um, in total agreement with you uh, to do the 10 million, and I think that gives us complete flexibility to pretty much spend the 10 million on any government services. So that's kind of been a nutshell. It makes it much easier for us to decide what to do. Um, the buckets, I'm, I'm in complete favor of these buckets. They pretty much mirror uh, what the IRS is report, what we got to report back to the IRS in their buckets. You know, it's pretty much uh, very similar to that with minor exceptions. So um, support that fully as well. I guess my question for, really just for clarification is, and I missed the budget meeting, so maybe it's because of that, but 
I, I, I did not support some of these items for ARPA because I didn't feel um, they were ARPA, although they're ARPA worthy within the 10 million, I didn't think they were ARPA worthy for what the, the initial goals were for ARPA, as, as Mr. Brock pointed out, three bullet points. So um, I guess I'm just concerned because this total is 5.2 million. So is it safe to assume that this 5.2 million is, is already allocated? Not the uh, 1.4 yet for the seawall. And as mentioned, some of these others might reduce some too. Okay, so I guess uh, my, my comment is more, is there any consideration for if this council and the council may not want to uh, determine that some of these are not uh, not to be used for ARPA? Can this be, can this be changed anyway? Uh, once the uh, budget's set. And I guess the reason I'm asking is because yeah. this is this is we did it during a budget process, but the ARPA budget is, is separate than the mm -hmm. than our budget. You so. look at he'd request a change to an individual CIP, and that would also go through the RTM for any change. Okay. Okay. I guess I'm just a little, mm -hmm. uh, you know, course questioning how that went down, but um, appreciate all your efforts on this. It looks looks good. Thanks. Councilor Borlon. Thank you. Again, you know, my comments um, about this and what I'm stating has nothing to do with the lack of effort or the hard work of seeing you stand out there. I spoke to you many times. My job is to critique it as I served on that committee for many, many months and bringing a lot of great ideas uh, to this to get to where we are. But at the final product, I have a, you know, if I just rubber stamp and say it looks wonderful and have nothing negative to say about it, it is not negative. It's, 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 it's um, ways in which one sees things. And not everyone's just gonna say it's wonderful and, I, and don't take offense to that. Take that as my comment, my issue, my, my way of viewing it. And that's what I'm, I'm elected to do and I'm doing such. I think a lot of people take it as a negative tone and and say, you know, well, that you know, my comments don't don't take away from the amount of time I sat with you guys going to this level. Um, but I do have concerns about how the ARPA funds are being allocated um, to CIPs before we even got to a chance to approve our buckets as a council. Um, I just feel like we're out of a line. That's all. Those are my comments. And again. I, we can move the money around. I do have concerns with, um, you know, the human service line being one of the lowest line. And, um, you know, I, I guess I, I have a question for the Arbor. Um, where does this, these buckets um, impact those, those levels that were determined, the minority population, the low income? You know, where, where are we, what can we do to make sure we're entrenching that as well as infrastructure? What would your recommendations be to improve um, the quality of life you know, that were set by the ARPA guidelines? Um, I would recognize that uh, a significant portion has been allocated to infrastructure, and um, just having that as a consideration in the reviewing application so we can ensure right. um, funds are available for human services and um, dedicated to unique needs within the community. And we do anticipate receiving a wide variety of applications from different nonprofits, mm. not only just in Groton and the region. Right. Um, I, again, um, so do I have to make a motion to request that we add a public hearing, a uh, public uh, comment information session on this, or, or how would one go about that, John? You would amend, yeah, make a motion to amend. Yeah, I would, I would amend this then to include, I think we should, you know, here, you know, you said it wasn't final, but I think the community has cried out for inclusion and to be a part of the process. So even though it's not final or it wasn't final, it's important to have stepping points. And I don't think that th this has not been presented as a final piece. You know, we're about to change you know, voting districts and there has to be a public hearing to talk about that. This is just as important. It's a large, large lump sum of money. And I think to do our due diligence, there should be some type of newspaper press release and people allowed to come out and speak to where we are now with these buckets based on what is in this packet before voting on it. I mean, that's what I feel. So I would, I would amend um, that we actually add um, to this um, a, a line for a, a public hearing um, where folks are allowed to speak at the council. It could be at a council meeting and a, a, a line where they can speak about um, you know, the ARPA funds. 
Do I need a second for that? So I'll, I'll second for discussion purposes. Thank you. Do you want to continue? Okay, uh, yeah, one second. I have a motion <clears throat> by Councilor Borlon to add a public hearing, seconded by Councilor McBride. So my question would be the process then. If we approve this tonight, if this would come before us when? Uh, well, a uh, resolution would be next week. Next week, yeah. Right. <laughs> so so if on we the third, here. and then you would set the uh, public hearing. Typically, it would be the month later. It would be at the first meeting of uh, of June, and then you would have a cow. I mean, you could combine some of these. Obviously, you could do a special meeting, et cetera, just a typical process. And then it, you would hold the uh, in June, in July. Basically, you'd. Basically, be approved in July, I guess. I just lost track of it. So, so what if we get a spe what would be the fastest way to get a special meeting so that we can get a public uh, input? Is what I'm asking. It's one thing to present this and say, "Well, now we ran out of time," but I do feel it's the job of town staff to think of those things and maybe if it had planned this a week prior and so that we could move it along. An alternate um, idea would be if you. Now, it's a longer process that we do the amendment, but if there was consensus to do a public hearing, we're sending out several notices, you know, for, to, for the paper tomorrow. Correct. For next week, we could do that also. Correct. I, I do, I just. But then you would want to do that separate from the I, not amended. I, I do think that it would be important, the fact that we've already started allocating funds <laughs> for CIPs, and I would hate for someone to say, I didn't have a chance to speak about this. It, I think it's the, the right thing to do. Um, I, I, and so however you think I can get that in a motion, that would be the best way. I think we, we might not get anybody that shows up, but at least we did that. We could get that out tomorrow pretty easily. I, I see no issue with it, whatever, whatever the council would like. If I can comment, I, I think uh, it's a good idea because although it looks like, you know, 3.8 has been spent and it's been spent for some really good um, programs and projects, that still leaves five million if you exclude the 1.4 of available funding, which is a significant amount of money. That if we were to have a public hearing, even if it's two months from now, I don't think it would it would hurt that much. It would give it would give public input on what that five million uh, could be spent on. And I think in the in the big picture, this these ARPA funds we have four years to use. So I think it's not uh, necessarily a rush to go down and, and spend this money now. So I would be in support of a of a hearing as well, just to get some. You know, like you said, maybe there's not going to be a huge output. Uh, because the, you know the output seems to be less than what we envisioned to begin with, but I think it it can't hurt to get some idols or, or thoughts from from residents for for what could be five million dollars. Thank you, Councilor Jones. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. So I'm just trying to I have a couple questions. So the public hearing would be in lieu of voting for this. The public hearing is before this is passed. Is that what the public hearing is for? Yes. Well, it all depends which way the council wants to do it. So I'm, I'm just wondering, so my question is, is there anything that we're approving tonight with this money, which would be approving this money, is there some kind of a deadline or something that you need to move forward? And if we delayed it till July, does that sort of mess things up? Well, we could even insert, you know, post it tomorrow in the paper and then have a special cow next week. And you could revise, basically just move this off, delay it till next we just it doesn't really push us back at all we are getting a lot of calls for help but i, I see no issue to well we have uh on april 30th i mean the federal government wants to know yeah we do have to um we we have to do the standard uh, allocation by the 30th but not the buckets so we so if we approve this we could still do a public hearing after this for sure. all of the other money that we have that we're going to be spending they don't necessarily have to be tied together we could get this approved, it gets us into the, the IRS things, and, then, and then we do the public hearing for everything that comes after this. So it's a, a two-step where this has now been taken care of, and we just allocate. And anything mentioned in the public hearing would be free game to make changes to the bucket we list. We could go back and make some adjustments. So the Yeah, even if you do this, if you get uh, different input from that, yeah, I, I would take it all into account. I wouldn't just go off a of public hearing because it's a lot of work. <laughs> but um, if you see something that, oh, that's a great idea, we missed it, then you would just amend. 
and before doing a resolution, you know, when you so do a resolution. So that, that, that's sort of my question is that we could approve this and still do a public hearing and still accomplish all the goals for all the rest of the money that's going to be done mm -hmm. and not stop this process. And, and that way all the deadlines are going to be covered and we're not, right. everything can move forward. So. And, and just to point out um, on that uh, standard allocation, um, there was no requirement for the council to approve it, but Cindy wanted basically to tell her that it's okay. Um, we're going to have to do that on the 30th anyway, so that's, you know, we have to check that off anyway, just so you know. <laughs> because another thing, that it makes no change to the uh, allocation of funds process. What it does is save Kevin some work, and it saves a whole lot of work for Cindy. <laughs> so that's, that's really the only thing it does. But, so okay. as long as you guys are okay, generally, we're just, we're going to go ahead and do it anyways. So. Okay, thank you. Yeah. And, and, you know, just I think one point that we should really make is through this whole process, we can continue getting public input because really what we're looking for tonight is that standard allocation and setting up the buckets. We're not asking for specific funding to be set aside in any buckets at this point in time. You know, what the council did through the uh, public, uh, through the budgetary process is already setting some funding. Tonight, we're not asking to set additional funding aside. And there is some level of um, timeliness to the sooner we can get release the applications, then we can start seeing a lot of the um, requests from some of these social services, human services agencies, but the longer we wait without ha opening that application period, those folks are just waiting for us to release the application. So I think that a lot of the word has gotten out that ARPA funding is available in Groton, and some of the feedback we've gotten is, all right, one of the applications coming out. So that every week. Yeah. Right. So, if, so if we don't approve this tonight, that sort of, that delays the application process till July, basically. But if we to approve this and we can still do a public meeting that everything kind of flows correctly correct and we can have as many public meetings or as public hearings through the process as the council wants to have we could do one in the short term i think there's probably going to be a sentiment from the council to also have a public hearing after we receive all the applications and we cl if, if we close oh, the yeah, application period, hearing, right, I think yeah. the council is going to want public feedback on all of those because right now it's it's ideas of funding and it's really getting impact on the buckets. Yeah, and, and basically with this the practical impact to us is as we receive these applications, first thing the planning staff does is, in the, is make sure they're uh, complete and in alignment with rules with, with that standard allocation. It's not really going to be an issue. Um, basically just says, okay, this this app was this pile, this app was, you know, and then and that's kind of how to present it. You know, it's just basically listed as being under that bucket when they're presented to long-term recovery and to the council. Okay. So, all right. So I'm, I'm just saying I'm probably vote against the, the proposal, even though we're going to be doing all of that stuff, but the but the amendment, so that we get this passed, everything gets set, we get ready, and we can start going. So, okay. Councilor Council Franco. Thank you. So, you, you've done so much outreach. I remember you had a board in here, so all of it wasn't through that simulator is that correct no. and you got verbal feedback and you heard what people were talking about and you've had probably lots of conversations with them is that correct yes um, so when if even though the simulator is stating this this graph here that shows what the simulator is showing here is that what you also feel you received in verbal feedback as well with all the vast majority of people you talk to I believe so. I believe in verbal conversation, people shared project ideas, um, and those are added to what the needs assessment will uh, add to the results from the budget simulator to create that picture of the spending priorities throughout the community. Um, so I, I think the budget simulator adds a deeper level of context because people are offering an insight on all the different, uh, a range of proposals, but people have also expressly um, shared the importance of specific pro, uh, potential projects with me as well. And right. I've documented those um, throughout the whole outreach campaign. Right, because in a simulator or, or the website, there was also places where people could type things in. It didn't have to just be the graph on the budget, right? 
they could type in what they would like to see or where the money should go. Is that or any ideas? Is that correct? That's correct. And I'd also um, I realized I didn't add it to my discussion of the average campaign before, but I'd also point to our two town halls we held in the fall um, with gathering ideas at the uh, city of the municipal complex as well as here at Thrive 55. Right, because I mean we have had public input, we've had public meetings, um, we have a long-term recovery committee. I'm, I'm sure they've talked to a lot of people in the community and they've gotten feedback. I've received feedback. People are reaching out to me asking, like, when are you going to spend this money? Like, when can we apply? Why aren't? Why are you taking so long? Um, and and I've looked at other towns. I there was just an article in the paper where Norwich is figuring out where they're spending their dollars, and a lot of it's on um, infrastructure improvements. And they're talking about with some of their leftover money, paying town staff. They're they're pay. You know what I mean? Like the. I was like, I didn't think that was a very good idea myself, but they were discussing like funding, you know, their salaries. Um, I think this is just from my memory, but I think a New London, uh, the, ne the town over, um, they spent theirs very quickly. They chose like a bunch of nonprofits like within like within very quick time frame, and they had it all allocated very quickly. Um, I hear Stonington's already starting to allocate money out to, and I'm, I'm sitting here waiting, and we're waiting for applications. We've chosen some through the budget process because you know what? My thought process is it helps everybody in our town to help their taxes stay, and I know I'm not, it's not the most popular thing to say when, when it comes to this, but it's helping that they don't have to pay with their taxpayer dollars these things in the future. They're not going to have to fund those sidewalks and that, that traffic light in the future because we can do it with a CIP and that is saving them money in the future. So I think that helps our community. Um, so with the remaining funds, all these applications that we're going to receive, we're going to figure out with that where we're going to spend it. And it's going to end up with human services and helping the people and potentially housing and um, all the other um, buckets are going to be filled. So I understand, and I, I love community input. I do, and I think I've received a lot, and I think we've done a lot. And But I'm also hearing people say, why is it taking so long? So I think it, to just say, all right, let's have another public hearing and nothing, wait another month and do this, and, and I, I understand that. But people are, like some of the nonprofits and are saying, why are we waiting? This was supposed to be helping us. And why is it taking so long? So I would like to move that we approve the motion that was originally on the floor. Because like you said, it, we're not allocating money during this with this motion. We're simply saying these are the buckets that basically the long-term recovery committee came up with. And they're saying, here's the buckets. And accept the standard allowance, so we don't have to do the basically we don't have to do the long form, you know. So, if we want to have public input and we want to have more meetings, that's fine. But I think let's just get this done and honestly start opening it up so people can start applying because they need to. This is I think should move a bit quicker. So thank you. I just wanted to add as well that although we do our best to document the outreach, we receive feedback from people all the time. It's been going on for months. That's how we've built an Excel spreadsheet with preliminary projects, which were then fed into the budget simulator to some degree. We have people that contact us every week who say, hey, you remember me? When's that application coming out? Um, so we know there's a large number of people that are waiting to actually apply. So um, we have a general sense on what their needs are because they've reached out to us either by email, phone, dropped in, and they periodically check in and they want to know when is that application coming out. Yeah, I mean, because somebody was asking me that because they're calling and they're asking you information, even the form, and I've discussed it with you one day, I believe, when we when I was out in the hallway, is there a special form that they're waiting for? Is it does it have to come from the state? I mean, like people don't understand what's going on because they're waiting for the form. 
so they can apply. And I am getting, I have had numerous, we as a council don't even have the form out. We haven't approved them to go to the next step yet. And, and I think basically it's on us. It's us as a council and it's, it's our fault that we haven't gotten there yet. So I think we need to, to move on this. So thank you. Council Baumgartner. Yes. <clears throat> now, I understand the standard allowance is 10, uh, 10 million and below. Um, is there a reason why we have to allow up to the 10, 10 million? You can write it specifically too. It could be done either way because we're only getting that much no matter what we do. And what do you anticipate the, the town? I mean, it, say we were to use the existing structure absent of that um, last minute uh, rule or clarification what like how would that impact what we've allocated so far and could potentially plan down the road i know in terms of paperwork it kind of the bureaucracy um it doesn't impact it streamlines it if you will yeah. but it just makes it easier for us to to track okay. less, a whole lot less paperwork okay there'd be no reason at all to not do it okay um but even but that it would just provide you that choice uh in terms of um so if, if we were to go that route, essentially every project we fund, it will be categorized as, or every project we fund under ARPA, it, will, it would be categorized, categorized as the under, falling under the standard allowance? Well, no, for instance, we finally just received our first application in human uh, services for uh, ARPA-related help. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Cindy was still, uh, Cindy Landry, finance director, was still working with Marge Fondulis, the H, uh, human resources, or services director, to where in that list of categories, I'm sure Kevin was probably consulted to, mm -hmm. does that fall? Because we still want to track it and know and, where it's and these falling. And these aren't our categories? No, it's, those are no, the, the official categories. The official ways you report things. So we're still tracking and there are what four, categories they're really under. There's four statutory categories? And there's so, a whole lot of different. So there's, there's, a, there's, a, there's six. So se six. Se seven summary expenditure categories. Seven. So that would be public health, seven. Okay, six, negative seven. economic impacts, services to dis disproportionately impacted communities, premium pay, uh, infrastructure, revenue replacement, and administrative. So that's a seven. Mm -hmm. But what what are the four statutory categories? With that, I'm just trying to under. Because uh, it says so, so seven, four uses. It's all, there's split. seven statutory categories. So four four uses split into seven summary category expenditure categories. Essentially, and, what we have here basically mirrors the paperwork for the feds, state and feds. So I think the four, so the four, one, to respond to the COVID public health emergency or negative impacts, two, to respond to workers performing essential work during the COVID. Those are the broad categories of why, but it's not really the categories of reporting. Okay. So, so it would be, you would have to kind of cross it. So when we go over each right. project, they would right. be one out of the seven. Right. One through seven, okay. Um, and then are we allowed to transfer ARPA funds to a, in this case, you know, the city of Groton requesting a seawall, uh, an entity that is already receiving uh, on their own uh, ARPA funds? Yes. That's permitted? Yep. And okay. of course, as we're doing with any outside agency, there'll be an application or a uh, contract that has to be signed. Okay. And um, my other question. Uh, again, some of the things we're, we're allocating 740k to golf course um, related items, uh, the 980k to the Sutton Park, uh, the Paquonic, Paquonic Road uh, traffic lights 430, community bike plan 210, parks and rec and uh, open space master plan 80k, town facilities improvements, we talked about the boiler, uh, 895k, ground public library windows 125k. Gateway Finding Sign Project, 70K, Mystic Parking, 150K, and then if we were to tonight allocate that uh, for the uh, City of Grand Seawall, that's 1.4 million. So that's 5,280,000 for the total allocation so far. And that would leave, and then uh, the Legislative Health District are about 86,000, ARPA Coordinator, 100K, Council of Governments allocation, 56K, Human Services, 150K, so that's 392. Um, so total funds allocated 5,672, which will leave an unallocated balance of 200, 
two million nine hundred fifteen thousand six six hundred fifty four dollars. So, if, in kind of akin to what what um, Councillor McBride asked, I mean, if we find out find that there are a lot of applications coming in and really great projects, are we allowed to revisit some of these projects that say? In the next six months to a year, we find out we are eligible for a certain grant, whether it's a state or federal level or some other funding sources. Like, I just don't want to get also, and I totally understand where where um, Councilor Franco is coming for. Like, yes, we need to put a plan together. Completely agree, but I also don't want to ever leave money on the table, and I think we can all agree on that. Right. So. Well, and the same thing can happen with any project, general yeah. fund project. It's the same thing. You could expend it, and then a grant comes out. Well, we've already done that project, but. There's usually more projects you can do. When there's categories of grants out there, there's always more. We, we have such a backlog of things to do. But um, in the case we need to make those adjustments, mm -hmm. is there anything that we have to do as a council in terms of approving this process that we would could allow for us to say, hey, time yeah. out? Let, no, let's it would be it bit. would be determined by town charter. There's a process for any of that. So, so, so it would be council RTM. There, there's a process. But oh, it's, po should, it's possible. Yeah, okay. if we, if we, yeah. Um, and then just to mention the 1.4, it doesn't allocate it yet. It just sets it aside in case needed. Uh, it reserves it off to the side. So it's not actually allocating yet. And, and so on that point, it, it, akin to what um, Councilor McBride asked, is there any way we can do that with some of the other projects that we have already committed to through the budget process? Not as of today. I mean, it has to go through the RTM and everything. It's already gone through a council. Okay. Thank you, right, Councilor Kassiri. Thank, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just wanted to clarify um, some of the earlier comments. Um, we did verify with you, Mr. Burt, before we allocated CIPs for ARPA usage that they were appropriate uses for ARPA, correct? Right. And there's many of those are things we've put off for years and years. And I strongly feel we have to take advantage of these dollars to finally get these done because there's just not an appetite to do them otherwise. Absolutely. And obviously, a majority of the council felt that these were community needs because mm -hmm. they were ap approved for um, ARPA usage. Um, just asking you in a different way. So we were advised by the town manager that these were appropriate uses for ARPA funds. Did you disagree with anything that he advised us on? I didn't disagree, and I would recognize it's the council's um, territory to, to make that call. Um, the needs assessment would be a guidance and a reflection of the input we receive, and it's ultimately the council's uh, decision to make that choice. Right. And you didn't see any red flags, just asking again, you didn't see any red flags or concerns with what we did approve for ARPA usage? No. I, um, uh, after that Saturday session and organizing the um, allocations, made a point first thing in the morning to look through and kind of align those with the final rule. Great. And thank you for doing that with us as we were approving the budget. Um, with all your outreach and all your conversations and all the input your department is getting from phone calls, emails, whatever, do you have a guesstimate of how many people you've actually spoken to in Groton? Hundreds? I would, I would put thousands? It in the thousands. I would yeah. um, even just showing it to people and people said, oh, I recognize the mailer or I've heard about that. And um, I would. In, in referencing our outreach campaign, look at it at people have um, been reached in a variety of different ways. Um, at least two of those strategies um, have reached people from Groton and they recognize that call to action um, just throughout the campaign. Great, so that's thousands of people you've reached, spoken to, that, that's amazing. Um, did anyone request a public hearing from you guys, from your department? not in my recollection. I've not received that request. Okay. Um, so I am not in favor of delaying anything for tonight because obviously this motion needs to be approved um, tonight for many reasons. Um, Mr. Burt, did you say that there was something that we could do to get this on the agenda for next week as a public hearing? 
Yeah, if you do it separately from the motion, if you just, if a majority of the council say they want to do it, we'll, we're sending out other things in the newspaper tomorrow. We have three public hearings next week. Um, we would just add one more to send out. I'm sure we could get that done first thing in the morning. I mean, we, we, we would publicize it on social media and our website. Great. I mean, I would be in favor of that. We're already doing public hearings next week. Let's just add it to, I mean, we're going to have people out here anyway. I would be in favor of adding a public hearing. I am not in favor of delaying any more of this process. I think we need to get moving. So thank you. Thank you. Okay, just to clarify what you were saying, Manager Burt, it was to to do what Council Casario was proposing. You would vote this amendment down? Yes. Okay. Yeah, and then and just tell me you want to do a public hearing. Okay, and then you just okay. do it. Because okay. otherwise you got to wait till you actually do a resolution. <laughs> so right. that's what's going to delay it. If okay. you just tell me to do it, we'll do it. Okay, okay, okay. Council Bordelon? Um, thank you. So I know I can share what Councilor uh, Jones is stating, but as the town manager, it wasn't going to be until July. My understanding, I would I would vote the, the way to spend the funds so that Director Landry and the state know we could do that today. And it would be next week that we could vote on this, but we'd also have the public hearing. That could happen, is that correct, John? Yeah. So it could be on the agenda, so tonight we could pass the direction of how we, which way we want to file. Yeah. Well, and then next week, we would be able to have the public hearing and then vote on this. I public uh, hearing uh, again with the remaining funds in, say, another couple months. But I do not feel comfortable. I can respect that we had these other, but people did not have all of these buckets and all this information in the final. When you did your outreach, we didn't know which way we were going. And so my request merely and simply is transparency and accountability, and I agree we need to move forward. We only got our first application after we approved the $150,000 uh, months and months ago, and I had to keep asking. And let's not forget, talk about time delay. There was about five weeks where we did not meet, or almost six weeks in the midst of the election when the turnover happened, that we did not meet on long-term recovery. And I did send an email and saying people were asking. I even you know, had asked on Bum, uh, Councilor Bumgarner, had he heard? So there was a delay there of almost six to eight weeks where we did not meet. So let's, let's account for that. My point being, tonight we vote on how we are gonna go about filing. We put in the paper tomorrow, the public hearing. That way we tell the people, here's what we've done. Here's the great work. What do you guys think? And then we vote on it that night. That's one week turnaround, one week. The money that's going to the vulnerable community, which is at the human service, is 150,000. That's all that's been allocated so far. That finally started the application process. That was allocated four months ago. So tonight I hear people talk about time and process. I know people that have been waiting for that $150,000 to apply for in the, the area that was uh, identified here. Um, fight the pandemic and support families. That's the money that that supports, not the businesses, the families first and then the business applications were coming after. So my proposal or amendment tonight, I'm fine with voting to meet the deadline. I'm, I'm asking that we have the public input, we're already having it, and we vote on it on Tuesday. That's it. That doesn't have to go seven months. Would that work, John? Is, is that a possible route? Yeah, the, I'd say there's two main routes. One is if you pass everything as is tonight, we have the public hearing, then you go right to resolution. You just amend the resolution with if you had a new idea. Otherwise, you'll have to have a special cow, uh, cow next week, so it's either way. I, I don't see any harm in passing it as is, but it's up to It's the simple language on a document. Mm -hmm. One week changes your ability to say, we gave the last chance for public comment. If I vote this down tonight and people don't want to agree with my amendment, my reason for voting it down would be that I, I think we, we need to make sure we're, we're, we're allowing the community to access this. There could be some new things that have changed that we have not captured. And I think putting that press release in and allowing that to happen would be full transparency. So it would not be delayed the fall till July or a month. It would be one week, and we could make that happen. And we can approve the way we file. We could have the public hearing and then do a special meeting right there and, and pass it. And that's what I recommend. Is that amendment on the floor currently? I, I think you had. Um there was more to the amendment. Wasn't so I'd there? like to amend my amendment. Then I'd like to. I would like to say that we pass the filing and then move everything as stated by the town manager that I had requested. 
Um, and, that delays it, and that would delay it by one week. But don't put the public hearing into the amendment, though, because that's what's going to del delay things. <laughs> you said that you could send it out tomorrow. Yeah, I want a verbal. Just tell me to send okay, it out. Yeah. Send okay, it fine. Out. Yeah, yeah, yeah verbal, fine. Because otherwise you're going to have to vote on this resolution next week first before Perfect. I could, yeah. And, and, hmm. and, that delay, and that would not hold it up but one week, is that correct? It's not going to hold it up either way because you have to pass the resolution next so week. A, it's so just two different projects. So I propose ways. an avenue where we are going to open it up for more public transparency and structure, and we're not waiting till July. It would be barely a week. And it would allow people to review these documents that they got um, when it posted on Thursday, and now they can come speak to what they saw online. This posted on Thursday. People haven't had a chance to come speak about it. We have to allow that. And then we have them come back for the remaining amount of time. Thank you, uh, uh, Councillor Castor. I see the time. Thank you. I was no, actually pointing at Councillor uh, Parker. Exactly. Thank so, so that's what I would recommend. Okay. Okay. <laughs> what is the difference cool. between what Councillor uh, okay. Kasiri just said and Councillor Bordelon? I'm just, I'm just trying to, oh, I'm trying wait, to find out. Her, if you pass it tonight. Point of information. What's your point of information? <laughs> Was there a second to her second amendment? And how many amendments are on the floor? <clears throat> There's one amendment on the floor. There was not a second. Um, that wasn't offered for a second. Can I ask for a second for it first? I was when you make a motion, a second. I was asking the town manager if that could be done. And so I would, I, could you call if anyone would like a second? When someone makes a motion, that's implied you're asking for a second. But can I just ask for clarity? What was the difference between what Councilor Kasiri was saying and what Councilor Borlaun was saying? If you pass, uh, if you go with Councilor Kasiri and pass the motion, the uh, motion that's recommended tonight mm -hmm. with the addition of the timeline or the uh, standard allocation, um, what you would do is you'd you tell me to do a public hearing. We'd get that set up for Tuesday. You'll have that public hearing, and then you won't need a special cow. cow. You'll just have your resolution on the cow, on the council agenda, and any ideas that come out, you just amend the the uh, resolution. If you had some idea for a new bucket, you'll just quickly amend it. Um, if you go with the route with Councilor Bordelon, then um, and you're only passing the standard allocation, um, you would have the public hearing at the beginning of Tuesday. Then you'll have a special cow to make the rest of this motion that day, and then do the resolution. And I just want to clarify, since you're clarifying my thought, is that my thing is we're not passing something before having the public hearing, and that's what the community likes to see. So we're doing the same thing, but well, we're getting I, there I a different way. Councilor Parker, Councilor Parker, do you have, you have the floor? Thank you. I think we're getting a little, it's getting a little convoluted right now. My quick, my thing is, I believe the public outreach has been done several times over. I believe the city of Gotten also put it in the newsletter as, I'm so sorry, I, I don't remember your name right now. Kevin. I apologize, the opera coordinator. That you Kevin. had public inf information at the Thrive 55, at the city municipal building it was posted on facebook it's not only posted on facebook there was plenty of opportunity on our website the city of Groton's website for public opinion and it was po is posted everywhere so we're now going to pay extra money to do a public hearing notice about the arpa funds when people can just come for public comment on next week at our regular town council meeting. Correct? Okay. Yes. That's correct. So why don't we just announce that we're asking for people to come out for public comment during our regular town council meeting about the opera funds, because they've come out for everything else, every other topic we've had for public comment. And we're not doing a resolution. All we're doing is approving the standard paperwork so we can get this in by April 30th. Correct? Correct. So can we just make life simple and just approve the thing tonight and just announce that we're doing public comment on the ARPA funds? Thank you. Councilor Franco? I don't even understand exactly what the public hearing would be for it. it. Would the question be to, what would the notice in the newspaper say, come out and 
give us your opinion on what these five buckets are and if you approve the five buckets or six or if you want to add or subtract some essentially it would be like the buckets or if we would or to say would you like us to do the standard allowance or no, just the buckets just the buckets mm -hmm. their their opinion of the buckets right well and how much does an ad in the paper cost it for these i mean aren't they usually i know it, betsy's talked about how much yeah. like she thinks they're expensive it's a hundred to hundred to two hundred yeah yeah so i don't know i don't i don't know if there's a need to ask the community is six buckets good or five buckets good or i think actually from the very get-go there were these buckets when we had when we first got the notice and you put the you know the signs up here these were the the buckets to begin with um i don't think it i don't even know why the buckets are coming to us almost and why we have to approve them Basically, i mean because the in the end <laughs> because in the end it's we're going to approve the applications and where the money goes i don't know if the buckets even matter that much like you said come two months from now if we find out there's not a bucket we can add a bucket i mean i don't even know why we're we're, we're fo fixated on what the buckets are i think we should be fixated on where should we spend the money and let's get the applications in here that's where i'm i'm fixated and to have our community like start applying for this it's been like this has just been going on so i'm not in favor of spending the money to put an ad in the paper to say come and tell us what you think of our buckets so the community is going to tell us what they think of our buckets so i think it's more important of how we like the spending of it so thank you council Baumgartner. Well, if that's the case, then we should probably just approve the standard allowance um, and then get a public hearing scheduled for, and quite frankly, I mean, it, it seems like the people's interpretation of the public hearing has ranged depending on the counselor you talk to this evening. So if we just have a, a standardized public hearing saying, talk to us about ARPA, share us your thoughts, maybe it'll give us a little flavor of what what the interest out there or some of the demand for some of the projects because we we haven't had and i understand we've had obviously public presentations and you know outreach sessions but as a council we've kind of left it to the long-term recovery to kind of just talk amongst themselves about it you know admittedly so for for some time and i think we can finally have some ownership but um can we just simply approve the standard allowance tonight and then up to the council, is there a way? Do we have to approve the buckets? I'm sorry. Point of information, do we have to approve the buckets? Like, you mean never approve them? Or they, they I think it's part of the process, but I don't think that's the time sensitive part of it. <laughs> so I, I'll, I'll admit, if I would have known about the uh, standard allocation, you know, a year ago, I might have said, let's not do buckets. <laughs> you know, I might have just left it wide open. <laughs> and just find out generally what people what wanted. What is the buckets a requirement? No. Of, well, of, we just said we were going to do buckets as part of that process of that the, the council, council adopted. Process. Right. But those, they'll still have to meet those summary uh, or summary expenditure categories, the seven? It doesn't have, we track it that way, but it doesn't have, as long as it's a general government service, it's okay. But we're going to basically divvy them up just so people can, so you, you guys could see them by a bucket. You know, that's basically what we're going to do. We're just going to divvy up. We're going to take the pile of applications rather than you getting one pile. We're going to just divide them up into six piles. That's what it is. Um, two answers. So I, this was the process, as, as town manager Bird stated. So this is what we're doing is dealing with buckets. But then the second answer is um, it, it just helps in evaluating projects and requests if you if you kind of know what your priority categories are as you're dealing with requests um i think that's the, the main purpose for creating the buckets thanks and if we were to move in the direction of the buckets i would suggest that we change explicit you know currently we have human services it would be changed to explicitly stating uh, services to disproportionately impact the communities because I mean obviously human services is sort of inclusive of that but I think really emphasizes the need 
Um, and especially if we're moving in the direction of the standard allowance, that way we're, you know, as a council, we're, you know, affirmatively declaring that is a priority of how we intend to spend ARPA funds. Good point. Councilor Kassiri. Thank you. I think we've made this very complicated. Um, I, I just want to clarify something. Okay, so the original motion does not we're not voting how to allocate any money, correct? Correct. Okay. This is why I proposed approving the original motion. I don't think it is important for the community to have a say whether or not we use buckets or not. The, the buckets are, are a, a tool, correct? Right. It's a, it's a tangible um, category to say this is how us, the community, wants to spend dollars. Correct. Like it gives them a category to pick from, and a, a way of having more choices. Correct. Am I right in this assumption? Right. Yes. Okay. Correct. So again, with us approving the original motion, it doesn't. We're not approving how to spend any money tonight. We're just approving that the standard allowance, and we're also approving. Hey, these are categories that we are going to put money into, but we're not approving any money. Correct? Is, Correct? is that a more broken yes. down way of what we're doing? Okay. Point, point of uh, information, we are approving. If we pass- You're not given the floor. 1.4 million. Councilor Kassiri has the floor. Point of information? She has the right to yield the floor or not. No, thank you, I am speaking. Okay. All right. And I lost my point of, <laughs> my train of thought here. I, I, I am not, I'm not in favor of delaying anything tonight. We're not allocating any money tonight. It is just simply categories and the standard allowance. Am I correct? You are correct. Yes. And I think the, the point of the 1.4 million is it's not being allocated. It's just, just in case we need it later, we're just gonna not do anything with that money. Uh, so, but we're definitely not, we're not saying we're spending the money. We're just kind of putting right. it to the side for now. Correct. Okay. I am in favor of the original motion. I am in favor of having a public hearing next week for this. I, I think it's important that maybe we did miss people and you're very, I mean, you did an amazing job with outreach. Maybe we did meet some, miss someone and public hearing next week, uh, that's fine. But I, I'm not in favor of delaying your already very hard work. I think the buckets is actually a good idea because it gives the community a tangible point of order. I am speaking and I have conversation going over here. That's a FOIA violation. Come. It was, if, if you would like to know, it was asking if I could speak again. <clears throat> I'm sorry. Um, it, it just gives the community a tangible way of saying, hey, this is how we want to spend money. Right? Okay. Thank you. Please support the original motion. Okay. Um, point of information. So we are setting aside 1.4 mil million. We're, we're not, not, we're not allocating it though. But we're still, this motion set Reserving, aside. reserving, right. not so allocating. And then it, it was something we'd have to come back to to actually allocate it later. Right, we're, we're not. Because they haven't figured spending. out the other I, money I just want to be clear that there is money involved that we're, mm. we're earmarking and moving and no. setting possibly for future no. use, no. possibly. I believe an okay. earmark would be Allocating. Yeah, I wouldn't call it earmark. So then, but can you just clarify exactly what we're doing with that amount of money? Because the uh, city's not sure yet, you know, what all funding is going to come into play. Just in case ARPA dollars are needed, um, we're just saying let's just not do anything with whatever we do on everything else. Let's just not do anything with 1.4 million until we know. So right. we could strike this motion and take that out if we want it. Technically, do council can want. do whatever they'd like. All right. Right. Okay. Um, I, I can agree with Councillor Cassieri. Um, I'm happy to hear that she's in agreement with a public. Uh, Council Borderline, we we already had two rounds of speaking. Fine. Okay, All so right. we we don't, we don't have a third round here. Um, okay, so. That's four. Like <laughs> <laughs> Councillor McBride. Yeah, I, I, I haven't spoken for the second time, so I just want right. to clarify that. When I seconded this motion, I in no way wanted to delay moving this forward. I want to make that clear. And, and secondly, I'm in favor of moving this forward as proposed with the, with the uh, public hearing next week as well, because I think we're talking about the buckets, and I think the buckets are a great idea, but we can now tell the residents what the buckets are, how much money has been allocated in these buckets, and get feedback from them on what can be used for the future money. So I'm in favor of it all as being discussed. Thank you. 
Thank you. And just to mention, there's no amount allocated to the buckets at this point. Um, it's just more guidance. You see what the survey results are. You see the buckets. They're kind of going. Oh, yeah, on the budget. Part. I'm not I'm talking about the motion. I want to be a resolution. No, I'm talking about the motion and resolution. There's, oh, understood. Yeah. I, I guess I'm envisioning yeah. at the okay. public forum, mm -hmm. these amounts will be, the community is going to see what percentage of money is going to arts and culture, what percentage is going to infrastructure, because this money has been approved. Right. The budget money. Yeah, that's not what you're really taking input. That's already done um, from the council perspective. The council can't change anything on that right now. Um, it'd be for the buckets themselves. Would you know? Do we, you know? Do you agree with these buckets? Is there something missing for future action? Right. Point of information. What's your point of information? Can I question, Councillor? Um, oh my gosh! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what's, Get what's, late. What's your point of information? But we're not having. We're not putting on the table to have a public forum. It's just public comments. It's basically putting it out in the paper and letting them come here on like a town council night just to tell us their opinion on five buckets. Yeah, I'm, I'm fine as long as the public is, my, my opinion is the public should be aware and comment as they will because these buckets could change. These are the proposed buckets. Right. Even if the council pr approves them tonight, they can change. Sure. You could just, you know, I, I was thinking of proposing administration and other to, to fulfill, a, fulfill a requirement to pull in everything else. So, but this is where we're at today and these are the buckets that you've done a lot of work and research on. And right, but it, I'm, I'm just clarifying like it's not any of the funding now. That's not what the motion on the floor is about, though. Correct. All right. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> so we've had two rounds of discussion. I've got councils wanting a third round. I would need, um, hold on one second, hold on one second. Councilor Parker. Are you asking a question? I just want to move the question, previous question. So you want to, okay, so we have a motion to move the question. Is there a second? You can't do that at Cal, can you? I thought that was only a council. No, you, you can't. Can no one there? Yeah, okay. so I've, I've asked this question. Okay, good. Um, Sorry. No, 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 yeah. There was a previous uh, I interpretation. Forgot. Yeah, I forgot about and that. And now it's, the rules of debate yeah. are the same in the Cal and the council. Got it. Okay. Motion, second. I'll second. motion to move the question by Councilor Parker, seconded by Franco. Not debatable. You need two thirds, which would be six. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Aye. Abstentions? Okay, that carries uh, seven in favor, two opposed. Bordelon, Bumgardner, zero abstaining. So the question is moved. So we will first be voting on the first amended motion, which is uh, uh, the main motion adding a public hearing. Uh, all in favor say aye. Aye. Point of information. Mm -hmm. I thought she added something about taking out the um, buckets. I think. No. She added the public hearing, which is what would delay it. Okay. Right. Sorry, I just hearing. wanted to clarify. Yes. So what are we voting okay. On? W can you tell people what we're voting on? So we're voting on the original motion and just adding the public hearing. Which, again, would that's what would uh, delay things up. Right. We could do a quasi-public hearing without doing this it. This could be the same type of public hearing right. one way or another. So, so okay. Right. Information. Oh. So we just... We're voting. Okay. Like, I have no Point idea. of clarification. All right, we'll, we're going to just call the vote. Um, we're voting on the first amended motion, which is. I'd like to withdraw my amended motion <laughs> and go with the. The, question, the question has been moved and, and well, we're I was voting. Trying to, I could, wasn't sure which one you're going with. I would like to withdraw it because it doesn't, it's not going to have the support, so it makes sense to move forward with the it, motion, with the public hearing, and uh, okay. John's going to post it. So at, this point, at this point, you can't I'll amend it. That's fine. Okay. Thank you. All in favor say aye. What are we voting on? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. It's my amended motion that we were voting okay. on. Okay. All right. I would just like the floor here for a second. Okay. Thank you. Um, we, are, we have a main motion, which is what you have in your packet, uh -huh. and there's added, a sentence was added about the, um, about the standard allocation. Okay. That's the main motion. There was an amended motion by Councilor Bordelon to add a public hearing. Okay. The question was moved, so now we're voting on both. First, we vote on the first amendment motion, main motion, with the standard allowance, with the public hearing. Everyone's good? Okay. All in favor say aye. Opposed? Yes. Yeah. Aye. Opposed. 
Okay. okay. Abstentions? Okay, that fails. Zero in favor, nine opposed, zero abstaining. Now we are on to the main motion, um, which is <laughs> what you have in your packet plus the standard allowance. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? That carries nine in favor, zero opposed, zero abstaining. Thank you. Can we take a break now? I'd, like, I'd quickly like to raise a point of uh, All right, we'll personal question and privilege. We'll, we'll take a five minute recess. There was one requested. We'll do that on the way back. We'll be back at 9.50. We're recessed at 9.44. Good.
Diary Pension Cola, page 38. All right. Mr. Mayor? Yes, Council Parker. Just want to remind everyone that we have to take consensus about 10 o'clock. Okay. You. Thank you. Director Green. Hi, good evening. How is everyone? Very Great, good. how are you? Great. Good, thank you. <laughs> so we are going to talk about possible increased cost of living for the retirees. And all the language is fairly similar throughout all the pension agreements where every two years you have the opportunity before you to make an adjustment if you please. Both management as well as the unions and other interested parties meet beforehand to talk about what that will look like. And if we don't come to an agreed upon suggestion, the union is able to submit their own thoughts. So after I got some actuarial amounts, which I sent to you, I did go back to all the unions to see if any of them still wanted to report their individual thoughts for your review. And the ones that did, I sent that to you as well. I ran 2%, 2.5%, and the amounts you see include what the finite cost per year would be, as well as the actuarial viewpoint on over a 20-year amortization period. And that's about a million dollars on one end for the 2%, and the 2.5% is about 1.27 so you have those numbers in front of you and do you have any questions that i can answer council franco when do you need an answer by what did, what's your deadline on this there's there's not a rush it doesn't have to be concluded tonight okay because um I think this is going to be an in-depth discussion. At least I have a lot of high things I'd like to discuss. Um, and we might be voting in a very short period of time here to recess our meeting. So I just wanted to know if there was a timeline. No, there's not. Thank you. Councilor Bordelon. Um, thank you. I think this is great. Thank you for um, putting in you know, all the different options and uh, breaking everything down so it's easy to read. and. Uh, uh, I can agree with Councillor Franco that uh, if we were going to discuss this tonight, we might need a little bit more time. So I, I, I think we need to give it its fair shot versus pushing it through. So I agree. Um, so I would actually um, would it just I would motion to just postpone it. Postpone no. it to. Um, um, we have a pretty full calendar right now on the tenth. If we could, I'd rather do it to, uh, May twenty fourth, if that would be okay. And is it possible to make this like at the top of the list since sure. you know it was at the end and she yeah. waited? So yeah, um, Arnisha, if you can remind me to put it at the top of the list. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'll, I'll leave myself an hour. Yeah. All right. So it's ten o'clock. Oz consensus of the council to <clears throat> continue the We need a postponement vote first. There's no motion on the floor. Just, she just made a motion on the floor. Oh. Okay. So just one second. It is my understanding that a motion to postpone is only required when there is a motion on the floor and you have to postpone the vote. Because if you don't come to a conclusion, it just carries over as a right. business, basically, anyways. Right. Okay. So the... Point, like, let me just get this correct. We don't have, nobody read the, there's no motion for the, this, and you, she started speaking. Right. It's so, like, there's no motion on the floor. Right, right, right. It, we have many agenda items where there's okay. no, no motion has been prepared in advance. Okay. And we just, yeah. So this doesn't have to come to our next town council meeting and no. be the first thing on the agenda? No, but I will put it uh, at the beginning or close to it on the 25th. <laughs> I just set myself a note. It's locked in. <laughs> okay. So any consensus of the council since 10 o'clock to continue the meeting? 
uh, just I, to mention, uh, Councilor Parker, did, unless I missed it, uh, Councilor Parker asked for an actual consensus on the public hearing. So, do I have five people? <laughs> I'm in favor. Okay, good. That we done. Okay. We have consensus. <clears throat> consensus to continue the meeting. Seeing no. I consent. Okay, one. I'll consent. Two. Okay. Seeing none, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. Move by series, seconded by Jones. <laughs> All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Abstentions? Carries eight in favor, one opposed. Uh, zero uh, borderline, zero abstaining. We are adjourned at 10.01. I hope you